Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Dope as Usual podcast. Before we start, we want to talk to you about one of our sponsors. This is BetterHelp. So this is what BetterHelp is, guys. It's basically an online app that you sign up for, and it's licensed of professional licensed therapist. This is not a crisis helpline. This is not a hotline talk. This is not anything like that. This is an actual person that knows what they're doing. They get matched with you, and you have someone. So go to www.betterhelp.com forward slash dope. That gets you 10% off of your first month of treatment. I've had a lot. I mean, there's hundreds and maybe thousands of people DM me talking about depression, not being, I'm by myself. I have nobody to talk to. I I get it, man. I get it. So this is an outreach. It's convenient. You don't have to go to a doctor's office. You can sign up online completely discreet from your house. So remember I told you this is actual professionals. They have a financial aid. There's a program if you cannot afford this. This is actually reaching out. It's better help. Perfect name. And what I said earlier is for depressed people. It's not only for people that are depressed. Some people are in really bad relationships. Some people have PTSD. They have trauma. They don't know where to turn to just because, like I said, sometimes it's a sensitive subject to talk about. Whether you're a famous dude or you're a construction worker, you work at McDonald's, everybody needs someone to talk to, and not everybody has that. So check out BetterHelp. What's up, guys? Dope is Yoli here. Hope you're having a dope-ass day. Welcome back to the Dope as Usual podcast. We're here to talk about life, drugs, accomplishments, and everything in between. Today, guys, we have a special guest. Before, like, OG, I've had my friends on this podcast before, but I have a lot of friends. I'm not just going to bring every one of them on. This is another friend I brought on because I know you guys are going to love this story. I think there's a lot to unfold here. So introducing our guest today, this is Omar, Ratchet Man, Ratchet Tone, whatever you want to call I don't know what to call you. What do we call you? Uh, whatever you, whatever. Out you of like. those three, fool, what am I calling you? Ratchet uh, man, you ratchet tone. It, it, let's just stay with ratchet man. Ratchet man. I'm okay. ratchet man today. Today you're ratchet man. Yeah. Today I'm ratchet man. Okay, you Since guys. The story starts with ratchet man. With, so. It starts that way. Yeah. Okay, so I want to introduce it that way. I know a lot of you. If you don't know, a lot of you guys are my fans, so you already know who ratchet man is. But if you don't know, can you give us a little slight without going into it? What do you do? It's. I wouldn't just say musician. You do a lot of shit. Uh, I'm. I'm. I guess I'm. I'm all over the place. You know. I just. I. I best word. Artist. You know. There you go. I, I like to do photography. I can do Photoshop stuff. My own flyers. My own covers. Music. Uh, all around marketing. You know. Mm-hmm. Weed stuff. You know. Everything. Anything that I like, I do it. Pretty much. So all around. That's a horrible explanation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's stupid horrible. It's all good. It's all good. Um, I'm just all around player, you know. What I'm and saying? I was about to say, did we just become best friends? That shit yeah. didn't sound exactly horrible. what Marty yeah. says. <laughs> you know, I have three kids. I live in Irvine. You know, my uh, wife's a realtor. Well, you said fast, so I didn't want to go into detail. No, you're good. You're but... good. You're good. Uh, let's let's get into detail. Where did you grow up? Because you have a San Francisco uh, hat on. I'm going to make fun of you all day. You have uh, a San Francisco hat on right now, but I... you're not from the Bay. I'm not from the Bay. Which is but, fine. We're in California. The, yeah, I know. But the Bay shows me a lot of love. And I don't deal with the whole, like... Neither do I. Politics but of baseball Before and we stuff, started, you know? that's why I said it. Before we started, people were like, why you got a Frisco hat on? You were in L.A. Yeah. Hey, I wear L.A. stuff, and I'm from Merced. Uh, yeah. It's, it's California love, guys. It definitely. All the way and across. The Bay has... I Bay's first, awesome. Bro, when I went to the Bay, the weather was nice and cold, super cold to you the wear point... wear jackets. Yeah, you can wear jackets. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And... I love being in the cold. I'm like a polar bear. So Same here. I love the cold. That's one. I first tried cookies for the first time in the Bay, and I fell in love. You know, that's like way before the whole cookie Girl Scout brand. cookies. Yeah, yeah. So, like, they used to call it cooks in the Bay. You know, everybody's like, yo, that cooks. You smell it in skate parks. And I'll be like, dude, where is that coming from? And it was my first time in the Bay. So when I... You know, smoke the cooks in the bay. I just fell in love with the city and everything. Like, I have homies that they live there. You know, Frisco's tight. Yeah, so it's just Frisco. Expensive. Yeah, Frisco showed me love, and I, you know, I was going back and forth because of work. You know, so Frisco showed me a lot of love. So I love to rep the bay. So yeah, I fucking I, love I, that place. I don't do the whole L.A. SF bullshit. Of course, know? it was a shit talk. But no, you of course, are not yeah. from. 
So where are you from? I, I am born and raised since um, I'm from L.A., you know, born and raised. I was born in South Central, King Hospital, the worst hospital in South Central ever. You know? Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, people, like, there's stories where people don't even make it when they go there, like, type. You know, you can do your research. King Hospital, Martha Luther King Hospital. I think they closed it, too. What? It, yeah, it's in South Central it's like somewhere. like Merced Hospital. Yeah, it's a ghetto hospital back in the day. But um, I grew up there. I mean, my whole family grew up in South Central. My mom went to uh, Barendo Middle School. And, like, I I ended up, like, going by, like, middle school. I was, like, in Echo Park. I was just jumping around everywhere, you know, we trying to find our spot, you know. And then I just ended up growing up, I would say, the rest from, like, high school, like, middle school, actually, like, sixth grade to, like, the rest of my life, I would say East Hollywood, like Normandy, between Normandy and Western and Hollywood type. I know I you don't no know, idea. but I'm, to, I'm I know the pretty streets. sure you heard streets, it yeah. around here between Normandy and Western, you know? <laughs> Get out of here, bro. We had so many Friday references the other day. <laughs> of course, I know what you're talking about. Well, yeah. So I, I, I lived literally East Hollywood, Hollywood and Normandy. I can Actually, grow, is yeah. it? ghetto over there uh it actually is man you think hollywood is pretty but it's not man like you know like you have to deal with growing up with like different gangs and different sides you know like mm -hmm. like anywhere else you know like there's gangs everywhere but like east hollywood they were everywhere and they were like neighbors they were trying to take over their territory it was just all scattered you know what i'm saying and i was like in the middle of it you know growing up but I really didn't even care because I was a musician. I was always like, fuck all that. Because seeing my dad, you know, like my uncles and everybody like in that lifestyle, I was like, man, fuck that shit. You know, like. Also, I, I you said there's a like gang here, this gang, this gang. Because I never grew up with that because Merced yeah. is small. Yeah. You're either the one or you're the one that got pushed out. Yeah. There's not a lot of gangs unless it's a race thing. And yeah. then it's like, oh, there's sub gangs. And yeah. This gang. no, but I never had to worry about that. Everybody just wore red. If you wore blue, you got shot at. Yeah, yeah. That's from Merced. But from over here, like you and OG talking about, well, there's them. And they control this block. Yeah. And they control this block. Yeah. Fuck. So you had to deal with those politics growing up as a kid, you know, like even though you had nothing to do with it, you know, you have to deal with the other guys from the other block coming to your block and be like, where are you guys from? And you're like, bro, I just live here. You know, like I don't fucking gangbang or nothing, but that's part of LA culture. You know, that's part of growing up. Uh, I guess that's part of everyone's in LA. If you grew up in LA, you had to deal with that. If you didn't, then maybe, uh, I don't know. You your were, parents went to school. Yeah. They, <laughs> or you were at a private school or some shit. I don't fucking know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Or your, your dad and mom dropped you off every day. You know, like we had to take the bus. So those are the, the times where you're in the back of the bus and like, what's up? Get out of there. Like, what? I'm not getting on my seat, bro. You know, like the fuck out of here. But it, you know, you deal with that growing up in LA. So it's kind of normal, you know, it's like the norm in LA, but yeah, yeah. I grew up in East Hollywood. Long story short. <laughs> All right. So, um, you talked about it earlier. You're trying to say it as artist all around. I do this. A creative is what it really, yeah, I think creative. You wrote a book, right? How yeah. long ago was that? Uh, that was probably like five years ago. It was more like a zine book, you know? What's that mean? Uh, it's more like pictures and like small. The coffee table book. Yeah, yeah, like right? a coffee table what was, book. What, what, what was it about? What was it called? Uh, it was called Los Malos. And it was pretty much a story of my background of my, like my dad. Like my dad's been in prison since 1991. So like he used to send me Polaroids, art, pictures, even the crafts they did, like cups, all kinds of stuff, you know, that they had their chance to get inside. So I would collect all this stuff through years of like years, dude, to like, till I Wait, stopped. So 91. 1991. So you never hung out with your dad ever? Not really, because when. You were fucking four years old. Yeah. And when he came out, he. Um, Wait, your dad got out? He got out once that I remember, you know, he oh, got out. I thought he's been in the whole time. No, no, no. Right. He got out once and then like literally like not even a month or two, he went straight back in, Ugh. you know, and I remember like getting my first Super Nintendo. He's like, yo, I got something for you. And it was like he, I guess he went to go hit a lick or something. And he had Super Nintendo with uh, Mario and fucking Street Fighter. Oh, shit. And then he's like, hey, I got you this. And I, that's how I got my first Super Nintendo. Fuck. On the time he was out? Yeah, on the time he was out. And, like, it was crazy because he would live, like, not even three blocks away from my mom. 
like, and at that time we were staying in Koreatown, you know, and I could literally like uh, go like around the block, three blocks, and I can go to his house. And uh, one time I remember I went unexpectedly and he had a kickback and everything. My mom was so mad because there was all these girls in there. She was like, that's what you're fucking doing here, you motherfucker. But yeah, but, you know, he was just, that was his time out, you know. So I guess he was wilding out, but he went back in. So then after that, just been in Is he there forever now? Yeah, I think so, man. I think he's lost in the system, you know. It's one of those type of situations because... What I heard is that if you get locked up around the 90s or like 91 and up, you're like literally considered like one of the like the main dudes of like starting into the whole mafia scene or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't get really too deep in it, but I know that it's he's in that system, you know, like Mm -hmm. he's in that definitely category. That's first. And then you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's in there. Like, so I was like, oh, whatever, you know, so I. I kept in touch, man, but it's just a, one of those things where you could only do so much. You grow up, you know, you're like, fuck that. You know, I don't want to get involved in none of this Plus shit. Plus, you, can, I mean, it's not like, oh, I don't care about you. It's more of, I can't be associated with your gang banging ass. Because yeah, because I'm trying to I'm do trying to live my life good. good yeah. yeah, exactly. It's not like he's a bad person. It's just no, no, of being associated not. with you, anybody in the law is going to go, what the fuck are you doing then? Yeah, yeah. What do you, do? you get, what are you getting them? What are you sending uh, them? Yeah, or what? You should send them some money. Oh, who do you do? What do you do for them out here? Exactly. Yeah, so no, hell no. it's one of those things. And then at those time, at that time, I was, you know, becoming this ratchet man, you know, like being the artist and, you know, trying to get out there, meeting the right people, the right connections. So I didn't want to affiliate with any of that because it just going to look bad, you know what I'm saying? And I, I obviously, like, you, you've seen the whole 6 9 bullshit, you know? It's just, it's, it's scary, man. You know, you don't want to affiliate with none of that and put it into your professional life, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And it's your dad, though, so it's, yeah. kinda, it's even harder. It's weird, yeah. It's one of those weird situations. But I just, you know, I love him, and that's that's his, his boys, whatever, you know? Like, they keep in contact sometimes, but I, I haven't talked to him in a while, so kind of lost contact with him, but... I don't know. Maybe I'll hit him up one day. Maybe I'll be like, hey, what's up? How you been? Yeah. Use a P.O. box or some shit, you know, not put my address out there like that. Cause it's not like it's a threat. It's just like, oh, the guards, oh, who's he saying? What address? Let's yeah, go check this yeah. fucking place out. Yeah. People don't think that shit's real. That shit's very, yeah. very real. Yeah, definitely. Or like. Or another for, gangbanger. Yeah. Or some other opposite gang not fucking like, oh, that's your son? Oh, that's your son? Exactly. All right, for sure. Oh, we know his address. I know where oh, he lives. Whatever. I know where he stays. Oh, oh he's, he's making money? Oh, he's doing good? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Some bullshit. OG oh, broke the whole thing down for Yeah. Me. I didn't know it was it's real. It's like they become obsessed. You know what I'm saying? Even though they don't know you, they become obsessed with you. And then, and once they become obsessed, it's a problem because then you have random people call you or, you know what I'm saying? Random situations, random people showing up randomly at spots and you'd be like, what the fuck? You know, this is weird. Or you'd be walking somewhere else and be like, hey, man, this, are you this guy? And you're like, what the fuck? Uh, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, like this one situation where um, I was fucking, you know, when Pokemon was very popular. It's so funny, dude. This shit is. You talking hilarious. about Pokemon when we were kids, or Pokemon came no, back no, no. out again? Came back. back. Everybody was yeah. Pokemon yeah. Go. Everyone's going crazy, right? So this one time, right, we were me and my friends are leaving Sizzlers, and there was like a group of people catching a rare Pokemon outside, right? And I was like, "Yo, let's go check it out. Fuck it, you know." We're all playing and shit in the app, and I crossed the street, right? And I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna go to a uh, Shadow Lanes. It's on Vermont and." fourth or eighth street or some shit like that and right there is really populated by another gang like it uh, obviously 18th street that's the big i don't know whatever the whole point is that that gang was there and then it was another gang that pressed me because they were looking for those guys and they're like hey are you i wouldn't think the tattoo guy with the long hair and video games Pokemon. in his hands yep yeah, uh, is the guy right. we're looking for all man. right yeah so trip out so trip out <laughs> So, so I played Pokemon, right? And I was like, hey, I'm going to go across the street and catch this Pokemon real quick. And me, like an idiot, I, I walk off from the whole group that was there. Mm-hmm. And I go by myself across the street. And then three guys come up to me and they're like, hey, man, are you, are you Pollo? Pollo's like my nickname from like high school. You know, they used to call me Pollo. Like, hey, you know, like. 
Pollo. Like, I don't know. It was weird. Like, it was a high school nickname. People still call me that. They still recognize me. But I hear yeah. hell of fools call you that. And yeah. when they say, I go, oh, it's my high Yeah, well, then when people are like, oh, you know Ratchet Man or whatever, they'll be like, who the Times fuck is that? Times of your that? life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like Pollo, high school, you know, mm-hmm. Ratchet Man after high school and becoming this, uh, wherever the fuck I am, you know. But yeah, so long story short, I get pressed by these guys and they say, you're Pollo. And I was like, holy shit. They fucking know me, you know? So there's no denying it. Like, oh, who are you, man? Like, you know? So I was like, yeah, it's me. Who's Who the fuck's asking type shit? And then they're like, hey, man, you owe us hood taxes. You owe us money. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, who do I owe money to? And if I do owe money, how much? <laughs> you know? Yeah. I was like, how much? And who am I paying this to? Right? And he's like, oh, you owe the hood money. Da, da, da. And I was like, you know what? Wait a minute. You know, I was like, hold up, let me make a call real quick. And then I called my dad and I was like, at that time I was, you know, talking to my dad back and forth and everything. So when you call inside, it's the main dude has the cell phone, you know? And then I was like, Hey, put my dad on the phone, you know? And they get the message out like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, they pass either, they pass the phone or whatever. He's like, what's going on? Cause I have the phone right now. So it's going to take a while. He's like, some guy outside is saying that I owe him taxes in the hood or whatever. I don't do none of that. You know, like he was like, put that motherfucker on the phone, dude. And I was like, all right, here's about to get real. So I was like, here you go. Dude, I gave him the phone. I don't know what the fuck he told him, bro. He gave me my phone back. He's like, Hey man, you have some stuff uh, on your on your shoulder, but it was all these like leaves and flowers. Cause if they were gonna jump me, I put my back towards like the wall. There was like all these bushes and leaves. So I was thinking like, uh, you know, like a karate movie, like or what, like bah! back to back, back yeah, to back, yeah. you know, type shit. So I was like, if they're gonna jump me, I'm just gonna put my back on the wall and just fight them like the front, you know, like yeah. I'm not gonna let them hit me from the back, type shit. But um. So, yeah, so long story short, they just wiped me down. They're like, yo, man, you got some stuff on you. And they gave me my phone back. He's like, oh, and he's like, he wants to talk to you. And I was like, hey, what, ha- what happened? He's like, tell him we're going to call him. And then he was like, all right, cool. He's like, yo, and I told him, yo, they're going to call you. And he was like, all right, all right, for sure. I don't know what he said. All I had to say is like, hey, man, I know Maria. And then he was like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Da I was like, hey, man, you don't know who you're talking to, man. Like... I, it's, this is like I don't ever do the stress call you know or stress signal you know but this time I was like hey man this is deep this is I don't this live in this world this turned to something else yeah I don't I'm not from this world that, that's their shit fam, my family mm-hmm. shit you know so for so, everyone out there man yeah for people that aren't involved it's just like a movie of like oh god now yeah. the hood ass fools want to kill me you don't want to shoot people back because you're going to go to fucking prison and live with these guys yeah yeah. You don't want to do that. Yeah. So stop hitting up people that you know aren't fucking affiliates. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It, it makes me so upset, it, bro. That's a lay, man. So mad, like, though. you can be walking down and people are like, like Yo, you what's know up? you're Where not you from? affiliated. It's like, bro, dude, I don't on. fuck If they turn around like this, yeah. obviously, yeah. something, if they don't go, who the fuck's that? It's. Yeah, yeah. When they swing on you, you'll know if they're affiliated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like this, like another story, right? I was, uh, my mom put me in karate class. This is a little funny story. My mom put me in karate class. I was probably 10 or some shit, right? Here's this me, little chubby kid. Yeah, trying to, you know, learn karate <laughs> or whatever. And I remember walking home because she couldn't pick me up. And I'm walking home, this other gang, right? This is Welcome to L.A., Another gang passes by, screams, da da da, there's shit, right? The other gang that was chilling on that block runs, so I'm like, oh, something's about to go down. And hear me with my karate suit running away like a chubby kid, but they caught up to me. I gassed out. They're like, well, what'd you say? And then I'm the first guy they start beating up because they thought I said that. But I was running away because I was like, they're about to shoot this place up, you know? Like, mm-hmm. So I start running away. They're like, fuck you. This is not. They start jumping me, dude. I go home with a black guy. And I was like, mom, never again I'm doing this karate shit. She's like, why? I got beat up. I was like, over here, like, yeah, trying to fight somebody. He's like, come over here, fat boy. <laughs> Dude, I got beat up, dude. I got jumped by some other gang. But I, I was like, what the fuck? You know, so- you know what's so crazy? It's like, 
yeah, let's jump that 10-year-old in the karate gear. Yeah. You got to be a real loser to do that shit, right? Yeah, it was one of those, man. But I learned my lesson, you know, like, you know, growing up. Just like, hit behind the car hey, and waited. Hey, don't walk through this place. Don't walk through that place if you're not going to, you know what I'm Bro, saying? I, like, I'll spot gang full, gang man from like a mile away. Like, yeah. I'm going to take the long way home. Yeah, Because yeah. me, it's like. I'm not gonna be. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna get my ass whooped for trying yeah, to stand yeah. up to myself. Try to stand, stand up, up for yourself. myself. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna get stomped. Or I just don't want to get oh, stabbed. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want to get fucking stabbed. Yeah. Bro, there was a lot of those in high school. Like there was chola girls fighting in like lunchtime. For sure. Titties out, stabbing, oh, all yeah. kinds of I've shit. Seen, I was like, yeah. what the fuck? The stabbings is, going is the thing on? that pisses me off the most. Yeah, bro. yeah. Weak dude. Just fight. Bro. Before before shootouts, like you know, like. Sorry for all the Columbine people and all that, but we survived that shit too in another way, in another form, you know? After school. After school, you had all the gangsters A different outside, school. Yeah. outside, ready to shoot everybody. Next thing you know, bah, 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 bah. we're over here. It's running. crazy. Grown ass man, let's go hang outside the high school and try to catch somebody. Like, yeah. Grown ass man. You're fucking man loser, bro. You're outside. fucking loser, bro. Yeah, but that's. that's Part it's of LA just part growing of it. up, and know? then again, it's it's a mentality. You might be twenty five, men- mentally is twelve. Yeah, grew up around a bunch of grown men that are twelve. Yeah, there's some people that still think like that, bro. They're it's sad, like, bro. It's sad, work, and it's da, like da, 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 it's da. more of like, yo, we could just smoke a, like a joint together. We'll yeah. probably be friends. You like that show too? I yeah. like that show too. Yeah, yeah you could be a game banger. I just do my weed but shit. See, I was mm. always that guy that kept it so cool with, with all sides. Same yeah, here. with that's so, all weed. So they yeah. So I was just that musician that's happy yeah but you those know, times silly. you just explained yeah but i mean that's it's part of life man you can't always no, win every battle of course you know, i'm just saying but look at that you could be doing music doing this working yeah. with diamond working with this working with this and people still hit you up asking where you're from oh yeah yeah that's that yeah, long ass yeah. hair and, and rocker shirts on and they're over here hitting yeah you yeah i mean that's like i said that's la for you man that's LA, you don't even have to look the part, you know? But yes. hey, man. That's-, that's why I haven't really drove the Monte Carlo around. <laughs> I'm waiting for it, like the first. Where are you from? From Northern California. No, no, no. Merced. Don't, don't, don't even say Don't say don't, Northern. Don't say ah, that. Ah, ah. Ah. Look at my blue shoes. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yo, I'm going to roll around with a red and a blue hat, depending on where the fuck I am. Oh, Yo, right God. after uh, Nipsey Hussle got killed. Yeah. Uh, I went to go pick up Rosie about two blocks from where that's at because our yeah. friends are friends with him or whatever. Yeah. But they own a salon. Yeah. So Rosie's at the salon and I went to go pick her up and I realized I was wearing the diamond shirt you gave me. It has the red letters, the baseball oh, jacket. Yeah. And I'm driving down like South Central, Mexican kid, bumping, smoking joints with all this red sweater, red numbers on. I went, oh. First time in my life I went taking my shirt off. I rode around town with no shirt. I'm like, nope. Uh-uh. Yeah, done. Yeah. Took uh-uh. the whole fucking thing off in traffic. Yeah, no, man. hell no. Yeah, South Central's not even it's just a different the beast red, too, you know. Brown. I'm gonna yeah. get shot at. I'm yeah. good, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it should Hispanic. not be running red fucking letters on my in shit. Crenshaw, you know? Like, right after that shit just happened. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's a death wish. But yeah, no, um, that's what I did. I I, I was just very cautious. I was very cautious around Same. everybody. Just like I always kept it cool, you know. Yeah. Some people still reach out from there. They're like, they told me, "Hey, man, if you know, if you ever have some shit, send it this way. We we'll handle it for you." But I'm like, "All right, I'll I don't want to owe you nothing." Yeah, I don't want to owe you nothing, so I'll think about it. It's not even like, "Oh, I'm better <laughs> than you." It's not that. It's like, no. I'm not like you. Yeah, That's I'm all. not. I'm not trying to get involved. Yeah, I just don't want it because once you're there, it's never going away. No. You stay forever. One favor turns into it two. It stays until t- t- exactly. Four. But what about that time? Like, oh. Fuck, all right, you did help me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. No, I get it. I get it. And they're not doing anything that's not real. Yeah. It's like, yo, we helped you. You help us. Oh, you. Oh, so you just take shit for free. Now you owe me money. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, oh, all right. That's that's pretty much how. I get it. Yeah. I, my dad. Really yeah, but that's a whole different it. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that book was pretty much me, back to the book story, me showing his whole life from 91 92 93 94 so it was all the pictures he was sending you just like photos of him sending me also there's only one photo when he came out and and they uh you know the uh kfc on western the only kfc on western if you maybe know only kfc on is that a huge bucket on the top yeah well then yes i do actually right after the freeway yeah yeah that's where i turn left down uh where Shabo Kingsley Kingsley Street? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the only KFC yeah. in the hood, right there. That there's like a dining up there, I guess. Yeah, that, that I have a photo of that, but like in the '80s, 
and that was him and my mom eating for the first time. Then while, he, while he's out, yeah, yeah, while he's out, there's only one photo. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I only have one photo. Damn, he was only out that long. Literally, bro. So you get a picture and then go back. Type, type shit. Yeah, and then a few oh, of them, sucks, and a few photos, obviously in our like living room, kitchen with all his homies holding guns, and you know, just a typical <sighs> gang shit. You know, like uh, it was that him in prison, him how he started his back, all his back, back piece, the whole back piece, a mural, like. My mom and all that shit, like all the photos. Did you have one little sister? Um, no, I my sisters came after. He he Oh from a different dad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're the I old... have a stepdad, so I'm the only child oh. from him. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm the only child from him. <laughs> is your dad he is he is he, he always staying his life sentence now? Yeah, 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 yeah. So Okay, he, so you never he, getting back. No, he's not doing none of that. <sighs> to the point where like every time he would call me, he would be like, Hey, what's up? Hook me up with an auntie or something. Fool, hook me up with like Oh, a lady? Your, yeah, like <laughs> hook me up with your girl's friends or something. Fool, tell him to write to me. I'm like, bro, oh, shut up. Oh my gosh. Dude. Yeah, like he's he's yeah, he's he's fucked. <laughs> that sucks, man. Yeah, That's I know. a sad, sad ending, bro. Yeah, but he he's cool though. He man. went at our like, age though. Yeah, he went in our our age, yeah, oh. straight up. Like literally like nineteen twenty one or some shit. Like, oh no. Oh. Yeah. But that's the life he chose, man. Like yeah, you can't, that's what happens, yeah. dude. Maybe better luck next time, dude, in yeah. your next life. Yeah, come back and be a saint, bro. But yeah, he oh I mean, like I still fuck with him, man, regardless, yeah. you know. Like oh, I you never like that joint now. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I never hated him, you know. I never had hold grudges or nothing. Like it I just know sucks, deep though. deep inside, like if he was there or around, he would be around. You get what I'm saying? Like, he wouldn't let me down because I'm his only fucking child. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And he always tries to keep in contact, hit me up on my birthdays, or he'll send me a letter oh, for my birthdays. Good yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. But he hasn't had my address because I haven't hit him up, you know? Mm. Like, now that I've moved up, you know? Like, yeah, because it, it's crazy, man. It's, it's a long story. Yeah. I, you, you told me what happened. Yeah. We won't say it on here, but yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, but... I mean, that's that's the way it is, dude. That's the way it has to be. Um, so the book, what's it called? One more time. Los Malos. That's Los the name Malos. of his, I have the book. Yeah, that's yeah. the name of his uh, clique from the gang. Oh, my you know? God. You fucking named it that, bro? Well, it also means the bad ones. Gotcha. In Spanish. So I didn't name it because of his clique. It just... It makes perfect it sense. It makes perfect sense. The bad ones. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. The bad ones. And then that's his name of his clique. So people put two and two together. It's like, oh, he's from Florence. Oh, okay. You know, like, you know, it makes sense. You know? Got you. And this yeah. Game culture shit's so deep. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, it sold really well. I sold out at the LA Book Fair. I sold out from Prince, too. Like, nice shit. Before the shop even Bring it opened. Back. Like, I tried, but I just, you know what? I want to just keep that exclusive and not, you know, like if you got it, you got it. If you know about it, you know about it, you yeah. know? So like now that we're talking about it, most people are probably going to be interested, but it's one of those, like, I'd rather just keep it there and like, if you got it, you got it, you know? That's cool. One of those. Yeah. Yeah. There's no need to re-blast that. <laughs> yeah, I got you. You know? Okay, cool, cool. So <clears throat> that brings us up to... What, middle school? Yeah, middle school. When did you start getting into skating? Oh, skating. Middle school. Well, I was always into skating because of Ninja Turtles. Really? That was I was Bart Simpson. Yeah. That's why. Me was Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles got me into skateboarding. So then my mom bought me the Ninja Turtle skateboard with the big, like, you know, that big plastic, like those old Tony Hawk ones, you know, Strips 80s on the ones. Side. Well, yeah, the bars. It has yeah. the bars, but it had also like a... Like a oh the lump on the back, a lump yes, on the back. Yes, I remember, remember that. Oh shit, huge, yeah. yeah. And then the big, huge green wheels. So yeah, I had one of those, I was a, and um, a that's how I started skating, right? And um, I started uh, pushing by myself, holding onto the gate, and trying to like ollie and do all of that. And then I used to always skate with the guys on the block. And then I had like our Armenian friend of mine, Robert, lived across the street. So we used to just always skate. We used to call, um, we used to skate down the block at our local church, and we used to call it the red zone. And we had the code for the church, and we used to open it and just all the little four stairs that it was in <laughs> That's there. That's sick. Or do little stuff like that, you know, try to like go through the whole church because it was an empty lot, you know. 
just manual ollie onto little curves, stuff like that, you know. Sick. But middle school, I would say, <clears throat> I start really like skating, skating. Yeah, the reason I'm asking is because you're so deep in with all these skaters, but that's mainly from a diamond standpoint. No, 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 no. Because you know how many, I mean, every fucking pro skater I name it, oh, no, the fool. I'm like, <clears throat> how well, and why? It started in high school, I'm going to say. Uh, all the pro skaters, uh, when, I, when we were in high school, everyone was coming up at that time. Chad Muska was coming up. Um, Eric Ellington. Uh, Andrew Reynolds. Um, and they were all like in Hollywood, just skating, you know, like there were so many people just like in the rise, you know, like Mike Rosa, Aaron Yeager, Josh Dowd. I can start naming a bunch of people. Right. <coughs> and I remember my local skate shop. It's called, it used to be around the corner. I used to go skate all the time and like watch videos and meet pros here and there that used to go to the local shop. Right. Yeah. And, um, the, the. The skate shop used to call instruments skate sounds. And they used to like do hip hop stuff, break dancey stuff, skating, Sick. tagging, you know, just like the all elements of hip hop type shit, you know? Because of uh, one of my friends called Tim, he has a brand now called Art Form, you know, because that's he's been always into like all of those elements. And he introduced me to a lot of people like Aaron Yeager, Mike Rosa, and they all live like on like, let's say, Bronson or whatever, like Bayer Middle School. So growing up, we used to see them like, oh shit, they live right there, you know? Yeah. So we like, yo, we should just go knock and see if we can buy some stuff, you know? Oh. So we so we were one of those kids. We're like, nah, man, next time you see him, ask him if he'll sell you like some trucks or something or you skateboard or whatever. Sometimes they used to be like, yo, here, you you bought this, just take all of this. Hook you up with a bunch of shirts. At that time, uh, DNA, skateboards, Rogue Status, uh, Alien Workshop, um, Glove shoes were coming up. Uh, so just, you know, Danny Gonzalez. I remember Danny Gonzalez on the block. Just like, you know, like. That's how you got, you got lucky where you moved, huh? Literally, like East Hollywood was, Hollywood was the place. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, we used to go buy skateboards for, from Melissa Steamer. She was coming up, you know, like. So many skaters, bro. Like, we just, just go and to the point where they were so cool, they were like, you guys we were little young. friends now. Yeah, we were the little homies that yeah. would come and buy all the shit and tell other people, like, yo, the homie fucking hook you up. If you buy some from him, he'll hook you up. But I would do that because he'll hook me the fuck up, too, if I bring more people, you know? Yeah. To the point where we'll knock, he's like, oh, Josh is showering <coughs> right now. And his girl opened the door. She's like, just wait Sorry. right here, you know? So me and my friends in high school always had all the connections, like, through all the circle that I grew up with, like, all the homies in Hollywood, Hollywood natives, I would say. Um, we had all the skateboard plugs. <coughs> and that's how we uh, Sorry, met. Guys. That's how we met Bobby Lee. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was actually one of my other notes. Mm-hmm. That's, so that's how we met. Bobby Randomly Lee. started hanging out with Bobby Lee on Mad TV for what fucking reason? Well, hold on. First off, Bobby Lee's a grown ass man. It's like, hey, little young kids, do you want to skate? And then you know, I'll film it, and then you come and do free extra work for me on Mad TV. Well, it wasn't <laughs> like that. It was more like we met Bobby Lee, and it was like, like I said, the group of friends that I was hanging out with that we still hang out, uh, Hollywood native kids. Uh, we all fucking knew all the pro skaters. So we're like, yo, Bobby Lee wants to buy some gear or whatever. He wants to buy skate stuff. Oh. So we were like, fuck it. Let's go see if we can get Matt TV tickets and sell it to him, you know? And he would be like, yo, pull up to the set. I'll buy it off you guys or whatever. So we, we would go, me and the homies will show up and we would just get tickets. We will watch some shows. I even came out in one, like a Grand Theft Auto one. You know, it was crazy. Grand Theft Auto like, skit of Mad TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It's pretty old. I've I've been trying to look for it on YouTube, but I don't know. I don't think YouTube existed at the time. What a know? random, random connection. Yeah, it was. It was super random. So we used to just sell skateboard products to him because he wanted to skate, and that's how we got tickets. We saw a lot of bands. We came out in the Mad TV show, like. It was just random. It was so random. Tight. Yeah, we met everybody. Will Tassel, Daryl Wilson. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I was just a I kid. I love Will Tassel yeah. so damn we met, much. We, like, actually, one of my friends, actually the guy Robert, that uh, he, uh, he's 
skate with us all the time. He's like our only Armenian friend growing up at the time, you know. I think he has one of either uh, Deborah Wilson's or somebody, like a whole Matt TV actual like uh, skit, like, you know, the pamphlet they give you when they make the script script. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Script. He has sign and everything. Nice. He still has it. Yeah. Yeah, I watch Mad TV so heavy, bro. Yeah, me too. So every Saturday, I, every I used to, Saturday. I used to always bug my mom with the no. Oh, from Stewart. I don't want to say. <laughs> Dude, I love like Michael McDonald. No, <laughs> you know. Look Yo, what I could do. What? So you met Bobby Lee because you were skating. You look at you get like, can I buy some shit? Oh, you guys like Mad TV? Here's some tickets. It was, I think. How, how cool. It was just random, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. It was just one of those random things. He saw us probably with a bunch of fucking gear leaving some spot. He was like, what the fuck? Who are these, what the, these kids, you know? Yeah. He was like, hey, man, I'll buy some of that shit. Yeah, it was how one random. of those. Yeah, it was random. And uh, I, that was, that's actually really random. And we saw Tony Hawk, too, when we were kids. Uh, through Matt, through him. Yeah, through Matt. No, no, not through him, but just through Matt TV. You know, like they were filming it. Oh, and he was there. No, he uh, Tony Hawk was there. Yeah, it wasn't. Bobby Lee wasn't there. Tony Hawk was filming, and our our middle school is like literally next door to like Channel Five, Channel Fox Eleven. So we were we, there were like all the like studios where they do Judge Judy, Malibu CA, all these like little you know little shows that they have right, but. I was like, Matt TV? What the fuck? Filming next door? Like, that's sick. Yeah. And then we all were like seeing, I think Bucky Lassick was there too. Like, they were all skating the ramp. Wow. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, but it was a Matt, it was a, it was a Tony Hawk. We were like, is that, we we're just like, who is that? You know, like, who the hell's skating that? And boom, Tony Hawk kids. And we're like, shit. holy shit. Like, literally the episode, you could see all the kids from the, like, all the homies from the block remember that shit. Like, you remember Tony Hawk, dude, what the fuck? And yeah, we were kids. Imagine going to middle school and they're like, hey, you can't go to class today to this side because they're recording even Stevens on the next side. Oh, nice. You get what I'm saying? I always wondered that when I passed by schools in LA. Go, yeah. I wonder what shit these kids see, man. Yeah. It must be badass. Yeah. It, will, it would be like that. Like, hey, you guys can't go in the hallways at this time because they're recording even Stevens. No or way. Or shit like that, you know? That's sick as fuck. So it was like... You grow up, so you kind of like, you know. You grew up in that yeah, world. Yeah, and it's up to you to make something out of it in Hollywood, you know, like with your connections or whatever, how, you know. How awesome what would it have been to grow up like, oh, it's, they're filming even Stevens. Oh, mm -hmm. sit here longer? Cool. Yeah. I was just so into filming shit as a kid. Yeah, but see, I don't think we had that mentality. I me mean, personally, yeah. I was on some. I was in Mercedes, little town. Like, yeah, God, I want to do that shit so bad. I, I probably would have thought, you know, like I've like people, let's say in Iowa, they're like, "Fuck, I wish I was in Hollywood, dude. I want to be an actor or some shit." And we literally have it in front of our feet, and we are like sometimes clueless as a child, you know. Yeah. And now that I'm grown up, I'm like, "Fuck, if I would have known all the shit that I know now." Back then, fuck, I would have been that little rich, famous celebrity, you know, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Bro, I used to serve coffee because I used to work at Starbucks to the fucking, what's his name from the Sandlot? Uh, the, the Great Bambino. Are you talking name? about the Red Kid? Yeah, yeah. So I used to serve coffee to him all the time. I used to see him all the time. See, as like a kid, shit, normal I, shit I was for me. so. The first like celebrity I ever met, I was in the Doc Martin store in San Francisco, and I met Sarah Gilbert, Darlene yeah. from Roseanne Show. Yeah. But back as a kid, I was so and you know that I'm so into movies. So yeah, seeing these people, like so you know when you said this line and this line, that was me. That was I was that kid. Uh. So for me, and when I started filming shit, I go, oh, so that's how he did it. So now it's like fascinating to watch people direct stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so I was. I was much. the opposite. I didn't care. There were Moesha went to our high school, you know, like our high school, Hollywood High, was known to be like actors came here, uh, famous musicians, photographers, mm -hmm. writers, etc. You know, I was like, watching Hollywood Squares all day and shit as a little kid. Like, I loved that stuff. So, me personally, I didn't care, I didn't yeah. really care. Well, you're you're fucking done with it. I was, I you're was, overexposed at that point, yeah, I, yeah. And like, <clears throat> also, I hated going to school. Imagine going to school. And like, 
is in the middle of a tourist spot, literally in the tourist heaven, you know? And you have to like bump your way to through it. Go, yeah, like, oh, I gotta go to school. I get it. I get and it. And it was just one of those like, man, this sucks. It's more like dude. this. Oh, you're like, filming your first movie. Good job. Yeah. I have math class right now. Mm hmm. Oh, every time I'm doing something really fun, I think, man, there's times, this time eight years ago or something, I was doing something boring. I think about shit like that all the time. So think about it when you're having fun. Yeah. If there's a kid across the street in class right now hating life. Yeah, yeah. But we all have to go through it. Of course. We all have to go through that time in our lives. Definitely. Man. And uh, there was actually another movie that they uh, filmed in our While school. While you were at school? Yeah. It That's was so crazy uh, to me. Wild, wild something. Wait, wild things? I think so. With Matt Dillon? No, 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 no. It's, uh, fuck, I can't remember this movie. It's about these girls. It's about this girl. Thanks. That really narrowed uh, it down. <laughs> <laughs> she had hair and legs. I don't know. It was uh, Nicole Kidman, No, Nicole Kidman? I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know Wild things. Movies. I don't know. I don't know. But it was, it was, it was pretty sick because we just heard there was a big, like pool lesbian seat. Wild things, bro. It's wild. That's things, Denise right? Richards. That and that the yeah. chick from uh that black haired chick from, from, okay. from the craft. Well well then yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, the guy that check out my teeth. Yeah from yeah. uh something about Mary. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Remember yeah, the guy so it was that the, movie the private detective? Oh, it's Matt Dillon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Matt Dillon. Uh, yeah, Matt Dillon, Nev Campbell, Kevin Bacon. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, and Denise Richards. Damn, they didn't put Denise Richards' name on the cover, but they put Kevin yeah, Bacon. That's the one. And he's not even a main character. You know what? Never Yo, mind. so you, there's this liquor store. <laughs> Actually, uh, trip out. This is how crazy it is. This, I, I'm telling you, growing up, I didn't care. I saw, met Paul Walker. They filmed it in the corner of my liquor store. That literally, like, around the corner, they're like, hey, we're going to record Fast and the Furious. And in my head, I was like, oh, fuck, they're locking the street again, you know? That's yeah. all they I They always thought. knock on our door because they yeah. film right here. Yeah, so then they put a little thing yeah. in your door like, hey, we're filming. Filming this time to this da -da -da, time. No Cannot parking. Park in your own yeah, parking. In your own park. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as they tell me, like, like oh, fuck, all like right. Like, you need to move your car out of their picture, in other words, you know? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I saw Paul Walker. And they were recording the Fast and Furious. It was right around the corner of my house. And <clears throat> another liquor store right on the corner, they recorded the craft. How random. Yeah, like literally, literally just like, like around the corner. That's why you reminded me like of the yeah. liquor stores from my house, like from my block around the block. See, but see me as a kid, like I'm in a small farm town. That's that's yeah. just fun. So I was the kid that I was, <laughs> I would make an excuse. I'm going to go to the store just like so go see. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'll be like, I'll be back. I'm going to go to the store. But I was just over there, like, looking. And Paul shit, Walker, like, what's up, man? Yeah, hey, can like, I get this juice? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, you know, one of those That's kids. funny. Yeah, but um, so growing up, I saw all of that shit, you know? So I was kind of Exposed to whatever yeah. the kid in the world wanted. Yeah, and I didn't really care. And I should have. I yeah, but then again, you didn't really care because it wasn't a big deal to you. means That's not what you want. Of course. Yeah. But I should have. I should have, like... Other people wish, you know, they had that opportunity, and I, I think I should have, like, you know, at least had fun with it. But I think I've, I've, I've did it in my own way, you know. Of course. And we're gonna get to that. You'll get to that point. <laughs> yeah. A whole different route of mm. of hundred percent, dude. Um, so that brings me to another topic. How and this is how I met you. Yeah. Uh, you guys ready? This is how I met Omar. Actually, last week, remember when I said. When you said, oh, I took a I took a car and somebody else rented it, and I said, oh, I have another story about that, but I'm not going to get into it right now. Remember, Marty? Yep. This is how I met Omar. That story is how I met him. So I knew this guy. I won't say his name. I knew this guy. We both mutually knew. My friend Jeebus rented a car for me, guys. He rented a car for me, and I'm, the lady's like, do you want insurance? I went, bitch, $16 a day. Fuck you. In my head. I went, no, thank you, ma'am. Because, you know, back then I wasn't making any money. I'm like, $16 a day is so much more when it's already costing me money. Yeah. Fuck you. So I didn't get the insurance. Always get the fucking insurance. <laughs> All right? The first time I ever met one, yeah. our friend one that makes medicated yeah. hot wings, medicated uh, lemonade guys. I went to a place called the Head... Well, I won't say it. It's a place uh, where they film Pineapple Express where he gets hit in the alley with the Slurpees, yeah. where they're smoking weed. That is an actual underground weed bar. So I was there, and they were showing me, like, oh, they filmed Pineapple Express. Wait. Oh, yeah, it is a spot. Mm -hmm. So anyway, 
first I was high as fuck, super fun, met one of my best friends that I would meet one later on. Yeah. I'm leaving. I go to turn on the freeway and somebody fucking hits me on the side, scrapes the whole car up. Oh, Wasn't even my fault. <clears throat> so our mutual friend, I go to him the next, I was going to go smoke weed with him. So I go with him and I'm like, I'm stressed the fuck out. I can, there's no way I could pay for this shit. I was broke as fuck. There's mm. no way I could pay for this. It's not in my name. I'm in fucking another part of the state. Mm. Jeebus is up there. I'm like stressed, stressed, stressed the fuck out. And I'm like, yo, what can I do? How can I get this done? So he took me to a car guy. He told me what to do. Yeah. And he even helped me. But he, at least they were trying. Yeah. They could have been like, well, fuck you. Go return it. Yeah. He gave me the steps to, anyway, while I'm sitting there stressed the fuck out about this car at our mutual friend's house, this fool walks in. <laughs> he walks in to drop off diamond, a bunch of diamond stuff, diamond yeah. clothing to our homie. And I, he meets, we introduced me to you, and mm -hmm. then I think we chilled one time, and then we've just been chilling ever since. Yeah. That was like yeah. seven years ago. It, it was just one of those things where uh, when, I think when we were meeting, or when we met up for the first time or whatever, we fucking, we knew all the stupid, the most randomest songs. Oh, yeah. And then for we, sure. And then Rosie was like, oh, my God. There's two of you. You fuck. Two? Yeah. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> And it was like, after that, I was like, yeah, man, I could say dumb movie fucking phrase and you'll know, you yeah. know, like, or you can it's, finish it's very it, rare. you know? Yeah, it's very rare. And it's hard to find someone almost like weird like you, you know, like I, I can sing a song and then next to, you know, Thomas will be like, ah, oh, damn it. No, I stuck in my head. I, Fuck yeah. you. I'll be like, if it makes you happy. Don't. Why you got to start? <laughs> you got to start on the show, motherfucker. You you'll know, you'll hear it in like 10 minutes. Yeah, it's, right? it's ready in my head. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Justin was here for a week. It's the same thing with Justin. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, no. It's just not going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> but That's how I met Omar. <laughs> and um, you were working at Diamond. How did that venture start? Uh, the Diamond this is a big, one. This is a big grip. You ready? <clears throat> Clip. Yeah. Ready? Go. How did you start? The diamond part. Well, this is how I got in diamond. The diamond phase so, of your life. So the diamond phase. Um, the diamond phase. This is how I got in there. So I have a friend, and uh, I have a bunch of friends, obviously, but in the skate world, the guys that really gave me an opportunity to get in there was my friend uh, Junior and Grayson. Grayson uh, is like he'd been working at Podium. Uh, that's like a big like I've heard of that that's where like Jerron used to work and uh most of the like uh I would say designers from like DBS and like um like Maddox and like stuff like that you know I think uh girl and chocolate and so he used to work for the warehouse packing boxes and all that and one of our friend uh Tucker uh, he uh, got in Diamond. He was going to be like the head designer and shoe designer and all nice. that stuff. So then um, uh, Diamond was growing rapidly, like super crazy, bro, to the point where I didn't even know what kind of monster it was at the time. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so I was like, ah, I wouldn't rock that shit, you know, at first. You know, I was like, that's not my style, you know, but like because I was all like, rocker when i met you, you wearing like all black sabbath shirts and shit yeah like rocker food you know i was just wearing all metal shit you know just long hair hat or fucking whatever you know just metal shit metal, metal shirts whatever but um in other words rocker food <laughs> yeah i, <laughs> I was got like you rocker food but um <clears throat> yeah fucking i got into diamond and like uh my friend grayson went uh tucker the main dude, the guy told Grayson, like, hey, come check out Diamond. And they needed interns. Like, they wanted interns at that time. That's how you started. So I started as an intern. I started as an intern. And uh, they were, like, do this thing where you had to work, like, six months, bro, to get put on type shit, you know? Like, on payroll. But they would hook you the fuck up with, like, all the gear. And it was expensive, so... It would kind of balance because... Hey, you'll it, resell. Yeah, or you just sell it, like, as normal, whatever. But that was, like, before when, like, they didn't have a system. It, think about it. It's a big-ass fucking worldwide company owned by one guy, skater-owned or whatever. Uh, him and, at the time, oh, I don't know, Jerron um, <clears throat> and everybody. Uh, so it's this big monster, right? And... 
that fucking monster. Uh, it was fucking a bunch of high ass fools running the warehouse, skater fools. You know what I'm saying? So we were all interns at first, you know, and from interns, uh, we end up getting into like payroll, and that's how I was starting like packing boxes, packing orders, make sure like when the UPS truck came, like you know, make sure all the boxes get in there. Warehouse too. Yeah, warehouse stuff, you know. E everyone was running around. And then, like, somehow I uh, <clears throat> I ended up um, running the shoe department for a while because my friend Junior that got me in there, he's like, hey, man, uh, I'm going to go work at Quiet Life. Junior, oh, like you met at Quiet Life. Same dude. The Quiet Life episode, yeah. So Junior, that set up your board at the Quiet Life episode, he's like, yo, I'm, I think I might go to Quiet Life and, you know, like run run the whole online thing and for all of them because Quiet Life is is really small, but like they're they're out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So one person could really like the same way as you. You could really run it by yourself. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But you, sometimes you do need help. You know, I'm pretty sure you're starting to notice. That. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so Junior got me in there. He's like, yo, take my spot. And, you know, they're going to put you on payroll and then you become the fo footwear manager and you handle that. And I'm going to go to Quiet Life and run that. I was like, all right, cool. You know, like, fuck. Yeah, give me your amazing. job. Thank you, bro. Like, Thank yeah. you. Fuck. Yeah. You know, and then little by little, I started, um, you know, just helping out a lot with the like the shoe wear and all that. But I met uh, my friend Angel Miramontes. Angel, uh, he did all the marketing stuff. He did all the cool stuff, but me and him were so cool because we related through music and like jokes and all that shit, you know? Mm -hmm. So we used to listen to the same music. Like I used to like, like trap, but like the dumb trap, like literally Migos was like brand new. Like they were just had the, their first hit was like trap and not the house with the boys at the bando. Some like old shit retarded, you know? But it was dope as fuck for us we're like dance or shit that's just gonna come up atlanta scene right mm -hmm. and i'm gonna get to that after but like so he was doing all the cool stuff you know meeting up with like mac miller would come he would give him clothes and so i would probably see, met justin before yeah, yeah yeah so he uh let's say uh wiz khalifa would come then he would come they were all he was go, doing artist relations yeah he would they would all come to angel to my friend angel because of another guy that worked at Def Jam named Brocky Marciano. So Brocky is like, he was the main marketing guy. He was like the Def Jam, a &R. He's also a shout out. I think Kendrick gave him a shout out at the last fucking album too. Like he's he's the man. Brocky's the man, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so when I started seeing that, I was like, dude, I, I fuck, that's, the, that's the, I, what I want to do, you know? Now in the company, I was like, fuck, I want to get in the marketing scene. Like, they're going to trade shows. They're going they're traveling. all the shit that makes yeah. the brand fun. Yeah, they're traveling. You know, they're going to Europe. They're going here, Vegas, doing New York, San Francisco, F Florida. I was like, damn, that's what I want to do, you know? Like, I know I can make this brand, like, dope, you know? Mm -hmm. And I can help my friend, you know? Like, I can help Nick in another way, you know? So, um I started seeing that, that he was doing that with those type of artists, right? Like the Action Bronsons, the uh, Alchemists, you know? Like, that's how I met Prodigy when he came one, but I was doing marketing at the time already, so that's that was dope, you know? Like, rest in peace. Uh, but, um, so started seeing that, I was like, I want to do that, you know? So I, little by little, I started, like, helping Angel like, yo, how can I help you, man? Like, you know, I'm trying to get in there. Like, uh, like literally from packing boxes to marketing, you know? Mm -hmm. But at the time, I was also meeting some people that were going to become the biggest artists in the world. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember you told me about a rapper named 21 Savage that's coming out. He's going to be big. And I go, yeah. oh, that's a crazy-ass name. I remember when you told yeah. me that shit. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so at that time, I was into the trap scene. It was new. Migos were just coming out, Bankroll Fresh, like all these people, bro. Fat Man Key, Sonny Digital, McConan, like the, it, it was like all first, like everything first, like 
Um, who else? Travis Porter, like all this like Atlanta artists, right? At that time they were coming up, Young Thug, you know, just like shit like that. So when I when I was getting into the scene and all that, uh Ham on Everything in LA was popping. Like What's under that mean? Ham on Everything is like underground parties in LA. Like like That's a great literally fucking name, like bro. Uh, underground warehouse parties where you can go to the bathroom and guess what the bathroom don't have nothing it's just a girl and a guy booth like not even like it's not even split nothing like you it's just going boom boom like it's a whole room that people are like pulling out big bags of cocaine pills xanax weed everything literally like a trap house environment insanely sounds awesome underground fucking ham on everything party bro it would go crazy all the fucking artists that you know blew the fuck up performed the ham on everything too like i have footage of like post malone performing his first show at ham on everything uh og Maco, maxo green even walk a flock of perform that shit one time lit that shit up and it's so hot and like musty warehouse type of vibe you know like almost like where you're like oh shit they're going to shoot this shit up or someone's going to get killed today, you know, mm -hmm. like type of vibes, you know, but also you have to hold your two and go in the hood. Fuck it. You know, like, so I loved going to him on everything parties. And I was like, yo, fat man key, fat man key was like my favorite artist at the time, you know, and became a really good homie of mine, you know, but he was new. Like most people in LA, they were not in, to tune into the Atlanta scene, you know, and I was what 2013 14? Yeah, 2013 14. And I was so at that time, I somehow I was doing, I was still doing, I was starting to do the marketing for Diamond. They're like, yo, let's give him a shot. He's already helping us, da da da, you know, let's see who can he get. In my head, so I was like, they gave like, you the artist relations, yeah, the, the title, the title, yeah. So I was like, I was like, all right. That's how is, you got into that. I didn't is, know this. This is how I'm gonna I'm gonna put in some work now. I'm gonna go to the underground fucking parties in LA that these guys are probably not down to go to, you know. I would go to them and I became friends with the promoter, Adam, you know, and he was cool with me and everything. So I would just pull up. He, he they, they, they were just like, Yeah, they'll get me at the door, like, I got you, bro. Da -da -da. So then I I bumped into Key. And then uh, I saw him. He was about to get a drink, and I was going to go in there get a drink, too. And I bumped into him. I was like, yo, bro, I fuck with you. Da, da, da. I work for Dime, Diamond Supply Co. And he's like, for Diamond? I was like, yeah, Diamond Escape Brand, Diamond Supply Co. He's like, yeah, I fuck with y'all. I was like, what's up? Let me lace you up. He's like, oh, he's like, for sure. I'm going to be in L.A. for a couple of days. What's up? Pull up to the studio tomorrow or whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm down. What size are you? Give me your size and all that shit. I got you, bro. I ain't even, I ain't fronting to you. Like, and then boom, I was like, it popped out. They made me little cards too, you know? And they had the diamond logo and everything. So I was like, here, bro, here's my card, you know? Like, it's my email. And then my email was boyo at diamondsupplyco.com. That was my official. email. Yes, yeah, so I was official, you know? So I was like, fuck yeah, you know? And that's what you do best at. Yeah. Just meeting people. Just meeting being people, yeah. Per, just talking Yeah, to just people. being me and yeah. fucking vibing with somebody yeah. to the point where he met my mom. He Like, he ate fucking lunch at my house. He done all that shit, you know? My step, he met all my stepdad, my family, like, came to my house. Like, yeah. Mad Mad Savage came to my block. Like, all these dudes came to my block. Like, that was love. They would be like, hey, what's up? Like, straight from Atlanta, you know? 21 Savage, you know, like, picked me up. I got in a sprinter with them, and they were out here, you know? Like, type shit. Like, it was one of those. That, and it's like, yo, when you're an artist, and you got to yeah. meet the relations guy, like, all right, fool. Yeah. And they're like, wait, and this was no, let's chill with him. Yeah, that's yeah. The, that's your artist? For, yeah. That's your guy from Diamond? Like, yeah, that's the guy. It's even, it's, it's more fun. It's yeah. like, I'll come to Atlanta, I got to connect, I got weed, I got clothes, yeah. I know where to go. And what yeah. they call you? Uh, so they used to, they, they fun. that's bro. where they're like, yo, Ratchet Man, you know, because at that, Ratchet Man came from my boy Kevo Beats. Kevo from South Central, he makes beats. And at that time, he was killing it, bro, killing it at TikTok. To the point that Par 106 played his shit.
What is what do you it mean was, killing it at TikTok? Okay, so mean? no, no, I mean not TikTok. I'm sorry. It was Vine. Vine. Oh, okay. So he was he was killing it at Vines, right? He was the one that made the uh he recorded some girl and he was like, What it is? Oh, what's up? Got joke in the cut. God damn. So that was him. He made that popular, right? Okay. And it was playing on the radio. So his vine was going crazy, you know? And at that time I was DJing like all ratchet music. I would make the girls twerk in like in the parties type shit, you know? And he's like, yo, I'm gonna call you Ratchet Man. That's you're the Ratchet Man. That's where Kebble came up with it. I was like, that's hard. And then I made a little DJ tag. He's like, God damn, Ratchet Man, you got all the ratchets. That's the tag, the right? Tag that was the tag for like the DJ drop, you know, D D, whatever. Yeah. And yeah, man, that's I kept Ratchet Man. So when I went to Atlanta and people, the, the artists that I would meet, they're like, yo, what's your name, bro? I was, I was like, Ratchet Man. So they're like, what? Ratchet Man? Oh, that's hard, you know? Like, it's what's hard good, Ratchet? Name, like, so then everybody would be like, yo, that's Ratchet, you know? That's where... It just stuck. It just stuck. So from there, like, I was like, damn, Ratchet Man. Fuck yeah, I fuck with that. And then I made a logo, and which is like the cramp style lettering. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, fucking, that's how I got this little R too, the same style, you know, like, and yeah, I kept the Ratchet Man, and then back to the story, I met Fat Man Key, went to the studio the next day, and then he was working with First, FKI. Your homie, homie. Yeah, yeah. But that's the first time I met First, too. Oh, no shit. Yeah, I met First, the first time I met First, right? So First was working on a project called FKI, because... His name is FKI, right? But Key, Fat Man Key, so together it was FKI. You know what I'm saying? And they they were working on that project together. So when I met them, I went and go to that studio, and then I fucking dropped off some clothes to Key, and I felt kind of bad because I was like, "Fuck, first is here." Like, I I I like I felt bad because I didn't bring them nothing type shit, but I had some like. XL like like a dark trench coat but he was he always likes all black and you know and he's really tall so I was like here man I only have this right now but I can give me your link you know like and I'll hook you up you know I'll send you some more shit or we can link up and then um uh he was like all right for sure we that's how I met first and yeah then after that we just kept it close and we used to be like yo we're gonna go to this event like, YG's going to perform this event. He's like, you want to come? Let's go. It's an Adidas event. And back then, bro, uh, at that time, you can just send your email, RSVP plus two, and if you make it on time, you get in for free. You know what I'm saying? It was Open Bar, oh, Red shit. Bull, sponsoring with Adidas. It was like... Well, oh. it's the biggest streetwear brand on the planet for a few years. And yeah. you are the artist relations manager for all the artists that are about to be superstars. Super big. All right. So here yeah. here, here comes That's this crazy. Like a fun job. Yeah. So here comes this crazy story. So then first and key were like, yo, let's go to this Adidas thing. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, about to go to the Adidas in downtown. YG's going to perform um, Link, this link. I was like, all right. So we link up and we try to go to the door. And I was like, yo, bros, I'm with uh, Fat Man Key from Atlanta. You know, me trying to play the manager role, trying to like get yeah. in there, you know, without waiting the line. I was like, this is FKI first. And boom, there's this young guy, white guy, two braids wearing a, a, a shooter, not even like a, a uh, quarterback sleeve, quarterback sleeve, wearing a um, headband with a Gatorade bottle, the Gatorade from like like about to play football with a Cowboys jersey, and it was post Malone. Malone, yeah. No tattoos, no nothing. Little, little like, what's up, guys? You know, and those posts, and I was like, I met him, and guess what? We couldn't get into this fucking event, dude. To this event, I was like, I was like, look, man, at least let them in, you know. Like, I don't want to go in. Fuck it. If they if they go in, they go in, you know. They were like, nah, we didn't even get in, bro. We didn't get into this fucking event, right? <laughs> we ended up taking an Uber back, and first had a studio, 
and he uh, only f- first been having studios. First had a studio, and first was like, yo, let's just go back to the studio. Fuck it. So we all got in a fucking Uber, and we went to the fucking um, to the studio. And then that's how I met Post Malone. And uh, he was first was telling me, like, yo, like, yeah, I've been working with him. He's about to be big, bro. Trust me, you know? And I knew because I I always had faith and trust in first, you know? Anything first puts his mind to it. He's, he's going to do it. And, you know, like, he's like, he, he calls his little room the Wakanda. Like, you have to be scared. Like really careful what you say in there because it like he wants to manifest it like so he's like like if anybody brings anything energy like bad energy or says something wrong be like hey bro don't say that around here like come on man you know like think positive good like, though yeah yeah so he calls his little spot Wakanda like he's like bro anything I say he's like I can't say it out loud because it's just gonna happen you know so he's just. I like that. Like, he taught me that, like, always, you know, like, just manifest that shit, you know? Yeah, it was a long time ago, but I went to sell these fools some weed one time because I met him there. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember walking in, selling this fool some weed, and I look over, and this is fool playing the piano. I'm like, yo, that shit sounds hard. Yeah. And then he turns, like, oh, fuck, that's McConan. And I love McConan. I'm like, yo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sick. So <laughs> Sick. I'm going to keep it a buck. It's just it, funny to me. Like, this is how you guys make this music, huh? Yeah. You guys are all just chilling, smoking. All right, you ready? All right, go. All right, everybody shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's great. It's That's why the music is good because it, it's just it's a, the environment. Yeah. And I'm going to keep it a buck. He was the key to Atlanta for me because he's the one that introduced me to Sunny Digital. He introduced me to uh, McConan. He introduced me to First. Like, he introduced me to 21 Savage. He introduced me to Man Man Savage. And ex- the list goes on, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and then it just trickled down from there, you know? To the point where I took a flight to Atlanta by myself. It's like, I know you told me this story. <laughs> me saving my money type shit, you know? Like, I was like, fuck, all right, they're gonna have a, a it was like, uh fucking fool's gold or something like that uh what's his name a track or something uh yeah a track dj um so it was atlanta artist was gonna perform and then that day i met uh playboy cardi little uzi rich the kid uh I think uh, the whole like father the whole new and, wave like, shit. Yeah, the, the the new kids. But bro, I have footage where people didn't know Uzi, like they didn't know who Uzi was, bro. I have footage like, and but Uzi was killing the shit, and people were just like, "Who is this new artist?" You know. Mm-hmm. But in my because you always told me about these new artists. I go, yeah. I don't know those names. Yeah, I mean, because you told me about you told me about little Uzi Vert, made in Tokyo too, made in Tokyo, and Twenty One Savage. You, Post Malone, I found out through Jerm Jilla. Yeah, yeah. Because he played me a thing. I go, who is this? This is fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. And that was that first song he ever did. Man, this was yeah. going to blow the fuck up. White Iverson. Yeah, Dude, White I, Iverson. Yeah, I, I knew it. Second we, I heard it, I go, oh, this is it. This we, is going to blow up. We were, uh, so we were at uh, Rex Studio. Rex is, uh, he had like, he has a studio in Palisades. Is like his house, you know? And that's where like, a lot of like dope ass hits got you know put on to the album and stuff for for posts and shit and i think it was like the second day or third day and post was bro i, I think he was couch surfing too like right there probably at, yeah at that, at that at that time you know i i don't i don't remember too much like detail of like him sleeping wise but he was always there at that studio recording and shit in that room so we would go there and i would I would I would kick it with Rex and smoke with fucking Rex. I would bring all this weed and shit, cause um, I don't even know where the fuck I was getting my weed from, but I was getting a lot of weed at that time, and I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna go smoke over there, vibe out with them, you know, mm-hmm. just vibe and shit. And yeah, bro, the third day he's like, fuck, Wiz Khalifa reposted it, and uh, I forgot who else. Mac reached out, and then boom, it just like. Pff, pff, it just started blowing the fuck up, bro. And I saw everything. So you had to see happen. the whole thing happen. Yeah, from the I saw it. Yeah, view. I was like, "Holy shit, dude! What the fuck?" You know. 
And then I saw their video, and then he got signed to Republic, and I saw it all trickled, like, and then, like, my homie Smitty, shout out to Smitty, he fucking DJs for a post now, like, Oh, oh, that's yeah. the skinny dude, right? Yeah, yeah. The one I met. That yeah, 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 Schmitty, yeah. So Schmitty, and he's also on, like, Twitch and does all that, like, Grand Theft Auto shit, you know, role play or whatever. But, um, yeah, like, Schmitty's still there, like, DJing for Post now. And, like, it was just, like, it's crazy. Like, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. His first you know? to produce Post Malone shit? Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he did uh, most of his stuff, yeah. Uh, he so had, sick. Yeah, he did Keeping White Irish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Because the first time I walked in there, no, not, not the first time, but he does way see. after, I just saw all the fucking Post Malone plaques go, what the fuck? Yeah, first. Because remember, I didn't know where I was at. I was yeah. just going, I was going there. Oh, no, no. That, that man's I did, a genius, man. What was it after? One of the times, because I told you guys we had way years before that. Yeah. It was a long, I don't know. I, I, it was a long I've time been trying ago. to get you to play him Madden. So... We wanted to do this thing before COVID, yeah. call, and I was going to do this thing where I bet weed. All right, I come up with a QP, put the QP on the table, and I go, all right, rapper. It's called Thomas Plays Rappers in Madden. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to bet a QP and go, uh -huh. all right, whoever wins gets to take this bitch home. Yeah. I hope I get to take it home because he's yeah. really good at Madden. Yeah. I'm really good at Madden too, but I don't play. Yeah, I don't fucking play, but I am pretty fucking good at Madden. Yeah. So I need to go to the studio. We'll vlog it. It'll be... Just a day. Yeah. And literally in my notebook, play rappers in Madden for weed. <laughs> That's what I wrote down, like my idea sketch. And then I was going to get the title. But yeah. But yeah. first, yeah, first is a genius. He uh, did like Two Chains, Travis Porter, Iggy Asalia, a bunch of cash out. Like he's been in the game for a cool minute. Like, he's doing a lot of good yeah, shit. Yeah, hell yeah. That's Shout awesome. First. Um, we won't get into the music part of your life yet because yeah. I want to bring that full circle. Yeah. So you went to the art of installations, doing all that. You got so deep. One of my things was how'd you get so deep into skateboarding? But that was before Diamond. Yeah, yeah. So your life was predestined to hang out with these motherfuckers and skate and all this shit anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because if you guys watch, but my it all connects though because the the rapper dudes, some of them, they're like, oh, we skate too, and then they would come like to everything. Well, weed. Music and skateboarding mm -hmm. go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if you, you have to fuck with all three. Remember, Instruments K Sounds taught me that all the elements of hip hop is well, it's rap, break dancing, tagging, fucking smoking weed, and making music. <laughs> literally. It was all, that was like, I guess what? It literally is a thing, actually. Like the elements of hip hop or some shit. Yeah, it's like ingredients. Right? <laughs> Am I right? That's the first know, time you... Marty's talked to them. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of it. He just said, Yeah, that's those, ingredients. Those yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I should have nailed it. Yeah. You guys sure. don't even know. We just did our first little live stream. Just gave the fans a little taste and shit. We just did right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. On what? IG. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, sick. The man's going to be. A little bit of water, and we'll get on to this next part. But the next part, fans are going to be really excited about. But yeah, man, that's that's it was all meant to be, I guess. You yeah. know? Came full circle, dude. Definitely. So skating was first. That was one of my next things. Skating was in high school. You chill with all these people, hanging out, doing your thing, Bobby Lee shit. Mm -hmm. Then you go, you start working at Diamond, Diamond packing boxes, working hard, and then you get to do artist relations. And that's why you know all these fucking major artists like like we do. Yeah. Like yeah. your friends. Yeah, yeah. So I so that's how that worked. You became artist relations. And it was the biggest brand on the planet. Yeah. I and so. the biggest brand on the planet has a really, really, really fun artist relations guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's 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 it can't not work. Yeah. So my next thing is Thank you guys again so much for watching the Dope As Usual podcast. This ad sponsor is brought to you by Manscaped. So from all our fans from all around the world, US, Canada, Australia, South Africa, Europe, wherever you're at, thank you guys so much for supporting. So big announcement coming from Manscaped, guys. They are now 100% worldwide. So you have the choice of getting the lawnmower 4.0 by itself, or you can get the whole 4.0 package. And that's now available around the world. It's now in Australia, Singapore, South Africa, UK, Canada, a bunch of other countries, guys. It's now worldwide. If you want to buy anything, go ahead and go to www.manscaped.com forward slash YOLA. Or if you forget that, just go to manscaped.com, use the code YOLA in checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping. So let's hop into the Performance Package 4.0. The new Lawnmower 4.0 has a ceramic blade. It's to minimize cutting your dick open. 
So it comes with this travel bag. If if you're a dude and you were born after 1940, you probably have one of these bags. So as you know, it's about to get real goofy and funny and hilarious. So this is ball deodorant. Crop Preserver ball deodorant. Yes, guys. Manscaped's got your balls smelling better. And then right here is the actual machine, that lawnmower 4.0. This is skin safe, wireless charger, waterproof. It has a light on it. It, it basically, uh, you have no fucking excuse to be nasty. So as I said before, if you're interested at all, go to manscaped.com forward slash Yola or just go to manscaped.com and in the checkout, use code Yola. For everyone out there, I won't say it fully yet. When you showed me this guy, I asked my little brother. My little brother's on the internet heavy. Yeah. And I go, do you know? And I said the name. And he goes, oh, yes. Why? And I'm like, why do you know that name, Thomas? I go, so you know who it is? He goes, my favorite, my favorite YouTuber. My rock was like, ah, he was tripping. And then yeah. you showed me this kid. I haven't said the name yet. You showed me this kid, and I go, oh, this motherfucker's entertaining. And I yeah. asked you, does he do drugs? No. Does he smoke? No. He's going to be very successful. Uh. And so how'd you start working with Danny Duncan? Because I know a lot well, of people that follow us love Danny trip Duncan, out, too. Trip out. So Danny came from the fucking, from the ground up, couch surfing, sleeping in floors, eating peanut butter and jellies every day because he didn't have money to buy food. So he would just buy, like, a big loaf of bread and, like, peanut butter and jelly and, like, hams and shit. Like, you mean, like, regular life? No, no, no. No, <laughs> no like, literally, that's all he would buy. Like, that's you all he had. like, regular <laughs> Yeah, like I was like, yo, this guy's eating. He grew up in Merced. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> but uh yeah, man. Uh I remember like Danny used to come at to the warehouse and this is how I met Danny. Oh, really? Yes, he's like full circle again. So I met Danny actually through another guy named Chris Chan. He's like a, another the skater. Skate kid? Yeah, yeah. So He's the kid I saw at Echo Park. There was this guy standing on the board and like yeah. recording himself slide. And I go, this kid's going to fall in the fucking water. And yeah. I post on my snap. Yeah. And I had like 5,000 people. That's fucking Chris Chan. Yeah, yeah. I have no clue who that All is. Right, bro. So, yeah. So, trip out. So, Chris Chan, uh, that's another wild story itself. You know, like uh, I like I said, I always been that type of dude that I knew who was going to be good at whatever they were doing, you know. And I always had faith in Danny. Like, I knew Danny, like, he was starting with his YouTube channel. And I knew he was, like, wild and crazy and down. Like, regardless, he didn't smoke weed, didn't drink. Like you said, like, he was just down, you know? Like, he was down for whatever. Like, he was just like, fuck it. I'm down, you know? And he used to stretch everybody. He used to be a physical therapist? He used to be, yeah. He used to be, like, really, like, into, like, therapy and all that shit so he knew like how to stretch so he started stretching all these athletes and pros and that's how he got in his name like oh danny danny everybody used to call him danny the stretch guy i literally i think i had him on my phone like for danny the stretch guy i swear no I, way I, I had him on my phone for a while like that but he got a new phone so whatever but um um so yeah so danny he used to come to the warehouse, and I used to hook him up with clothes and all that. I used to send him some boxes in Florida. And uh, I remember, bro, like, I'm not going to lie. My bad. That was you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just pulled up his fucking channel here, and this shit started playing. Oh, my bad. Oh, I thought that was something oh, outside. Yeah, 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 my yeah. bad. Yeah. So, um, Danny, right? So, I remember, like, the, the whole marketing team and everybody used to tell me, like, yo, like, that guy is crazy, man. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, uh, you shouldn't be giving him too much shit or whatever. I was like, they didn't like what he was doing too much. Kind of, yeah. They thought he was probably like annoying or something, you know. I don't know, man. It's just some people have, they have a certain taste to what they want to give their brand to. But I, I was, I get it. you know, like, like, it's like on the Jackass yeah. style. He was going yeah. with Jackass without yeah. the popularity yet. Yeah, but he was growing. I was. I knew he was gonna be. You could see it. Yeah, yeah, of course. He's fucking funny, yeah. bro. So and like, the the dude is that. Like, if you think like the dude is not like that off cameras, no, he's really like that off cameras. Like, you don't even need a camera on him. But he's gonna do all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I I always. Like, knew he was going to fucking kill it. He was growing a lot in YouTube. And then he had his... I uh, remember, this is how it all, like, happened. Like, he had his 
first little like pop up like hey like you know his youtube's popping now so he's like hey meet me at echo park on sunset sunset and echo park mm -hmm. literally in the corner and he ran in like this little um uh, i think it was like a hair salon and he was like yo bro i need help i was like what you need he's like I just need a DJ come and come and play some tunes, bro. The trap shit that, you know, because I was playing, I was listening to all the dope fucking music, the trap shit. The kids were like, "Oh, what is this?" You know, yeah. and like that turned up shit, you know. And that's how I s slowly became Danny's tour DJ, you know, like. And then now we just every time he wants to go on tour, he just hits me up like, "Yo, pull up." Because last like, time, because like I said, my, my little brother is a big fan, and he knows that. So <clears throat> when they were on tour last time, I was just chilling randomly with my little brother and my mom. Yeah. And this fool FaceTimes me, and he's with Danny, and it was so Marty. To see my little brother's face when I handed him the fucking phone, and it was Danny Duncan. <laughs> my brother, he pretty much just exploded. <laughs> like his whole body just... <laughs> From happiness, bro. <laughs> it was his screensaver. His he screenshot. It was a screensaver for like a year and a half. Yeah, and we're actually uh, like it's just it's one of those things. Like, uh, thank you for doing that, motherfucker. My little brother's so excited, and you're about to go back on tour. Yeah, S September twenty fourth. So Omar's Danny's DJ. Does uh, he tour rap? DJ. Does he? Well, I'm bro, stupid question. All right, so have you seen any of his? Video? Did you see any of it yet? I don't know anything about him other than he's all got he a does channel. is, and he's just an entertaining. He's jackass without the danger, without the cussing, without the dicks, and family friendly. So the moms are like, yeah. His so brand's called Virginity what he Rocks. On stage when he goes and performs live. Cut your fucking hair off. Uh, battles everybody in gladiator shit. They play fucking music. They do a bunch of activities. He has like eight friends on the channel. It's just Marty, Marty. When I tell you this fool is making money just being himself. So it's like a play that Yo, he does? look. No. Look it's at just, all these goddamn dates. Look, that's because it's going to be VIP, packed. Look at all the VIP sold out, bro. Every packed. Sold I'm just out. trying to fit like that's I've never heard of this before Bro, being done. You know how you like we, we have fans, and you're like, yo, Thomas, your fans are fucking wild. Like, yeah, I know. Yo, by the way, His shout out to y'all, man. Shout are out to fucking wild, bro. All right. Like in the in the terms of like, he doesn't do drugs. So if you're 12, you can come to the show. Yeah. Oh, if you're 14, you can come to the show. There's nothing that has to do with drugs. Yo. So much bigger Bro. than it's so much Bro. bigger than what we okay, can do. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> this is all I gotta say. <laughs> This is all right. So everybody's like, Danny, 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 when he wants to win, I guess, you know, before we come out. You know, the first thing I do, all I have to do. I and, know what you do, motherfucker. And they were like, oh my God. I was like, oh my pussy. That's what he and said. And then the, the whole microphone crowd's like, what the fuck? Ah! Wait. Because so he is says it all kids shit. or no? No, because he says stupid shit like yeah. that. They say a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Marty. When Yo. I tell you that... This isn't for 12-year-olds? No, but it no, is. It, it, <laughs> but it's for kids that just started cussing oh, yeah. and college kids. And I mean, I'm in my, I'm 31. And I'm like, yo. That's your job, The new bro? Danny Duncan. The uh, new yeah. Danny Duncan uh, video's out. Let me see what he did today. Oh, my pussy. Last time he went and rented out these like tricycles that you ride in the thing and just destroyed them mm -hmm. throughout the city of San Francisco, I think. But he's making so much money. He goes, oh, I just pay for it. Because he's like, oh, how much is it going to be? Okay, I'll cover the cost. Thank you. And it's so... Mm -hmm. But he's got money. So he'll go to a closed fast food restaurant and go, hey, uh, how much is it going to cost for me to be able to make my own food and film it? Okay, cool, here. So we're in the back of Subway right now. It's like shit that you want to do, but, but you can't because yo, you don't yo, have no, the money. But no, 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 Sometimes they just let him do it, though. Oh, because he's, he's very, yeah. very charismatic. Yeah, he talks so fucking well. Cause he, I've been he there. He can do this talking like, to somebody and then talk to around talking to someone's dad. Be like, all right, I'm hopping over. It's Ooh. so good. He's so outgoing. It's so charismatic. He's so he's what every kid wants to be like in school class clown. But he's very articulate when he speaks. He's he's yeah. he's a, a winning recipe. So how does success. he rank against <laughs> the other like top like? YouTubers in his with category. fan base wise, like, I think I he's the biggest fan base I've ever seen. Ironically, I don't know anything about um, YouTubers. Like. I, I, he's just himself. It's man. just a strong fan base, man. It's the people really love it. Be, you know how himself. like people love our shit. Yeah, yeah. If we could appeal to everyone. All right, so is he, he's bigger than Logan Paul. 
Um, I, no, not in no, terms of money no. or anything, but I guarantee if Logan Paul too. walks down the street and his fans are there, they're like, yo, whoa, can I get a picture? If they show up, everyone's going to start ripping his fucking clothes up. Gotcha. The last show, they beat his car to fucking death. Like, they destroyed his car because it was in the parking lot. Because he's like, yeah, you guys can hit it. And then it went to what? He couldn't even drive it. Yeah. He couldn't even drive it. Total. Total. But he just bought another one. But it's, it's like that at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. It's like good pranks. Like, oh, I'm, I'm going to prank my sister by throwing her car off a fucking bridge. Yeah. And then she's going to turn around and I bought her a brand new car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. You still got to have fun. Yeah, and yeah. he's like, you can do with money. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, but before it's just charismatic vlog. He's just a he's a funny guy. The one I saw that got me hooked was was uh he was went and hired like twelve dudes from Home Depot to play baseball yeah. with him. Yeah, yeah. Football. He's like, yo, you guys well, how much you charge? All right, cool, you guys we're just gonna play football. Yeah, and then go <laughs> and, swim. And record the whole thing. <laughs> and go swim. Yeah, go swim. <laughs> it's just like yo. Bought everybody <laughs> Chick fil A. And you just every- you just were was it him that you were saying like, look at how we how we like edited it. I like how this looks. Yes. So what's his what's his production value? Is he got a whole team or is he like minimal? Uh, he just uh, to be honest, he just has a guy that sticks his side to. He's been a sidekick. Just camera person. Like um, That's it. just like you and Marty, yeah, pretty much. That's it. But That's, like, um, so the the edits so, aren't crazy. There's only like. Two percent of the whole video is edited cool. So yeah, yeah. So but it looks good. Now, yeah. now that he's obviously bigger and he has like other talented people around him, he has two uh he has two filmers, right? Mm-hmm. But the other one catches uh he had probably has another vision. I I just seen it recently because I've I haven't been around him because of COVID and all that stuff. So he's been in Florida and um when uh, he did a little pop up in Fairfax recently, he had two filmers, like one shooting photos, like really good at shooting dope ass photos, and the other guy was shooting like the the B camera, and good. then his main dude who had the main one, you know. Good. So four four person team with the per- with yeah. the host. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, and then his runners. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. you can fit in one car. But they're all his friends, though. You know what I'm saying? Like that's great. Yeah, yeah. But he's oh, getting yeah. paid so much. Like, yo, don't worry yeah, about your rent. We'll just. Help yeah, me. yeah, yeah. I got you covered. Got so, you yeah, covered. Yeah, got you covered. Got you yeah, covered. Yeah. It's great. That's what I love about yeah. YouTube. Yeah. Great. That can happen. Yeah, he's, he's dope. He's amazing. Man. <clears throat> yeah, so. But that's how you got involved with him? I did not know yeah, that. Yeah. I know we just went like a 15 minute. Well, I don't, because people always tag me in his shit. I don't, I don't even know who this dude is. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, Danny. It's funny. I, yeah. when I watched it, your uh, house the other day, I went, yo, this. This fool's yeah, yeah. too much. He's fucking funny. Bro. Yeah, yeah. He's a funny he's motherfucker. Guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's and I, like me for me to you. Like I get why he's so popular. And yeah, man, I, I, I totally I'll, understand. I uh, so you're going on tour for three fucking months. Yeah, yeah. So um, so this fool's gonna be on tour so he, for three months. He's got the virginity rock. That's the brand. The I eat ass. He's got yeah, the yeah. yin and the yang going. I respect the that. yin <laughs> and the yang. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have Virginity Rocks on, tattooed added right, right there from oh, the last shit. tour on his arm. Yeah, Where, how did that start? I saw that in fucking Sears or something. Bro, like, it's big. I'm probably sounding no, like old mall. as fuck right now. No, no, no. It's I'm shocked definitely. Cam don't watch him. I'm going to be honest. Probably does. Probably does. Yeah. His son. Yeah, I, that. If they're, if they're screaming about pussies and shit, he's probably not watching them. Uh, no, that's not like the whole no, thing. No, that's not. It's, it's like a little like, like tagline for the kids that are older. Yeah. It's not for everybody. Not every kid saying the shit. When he uploads to YouTube, does he check the made for kids? I do not know. I don't know. That's like. But there's nothing to tell me that it's not. There's nothing to tell me that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because uh, there's comments. If you have made for kids, there's no comments. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Um, Damn, we just went on 20 fucking minutes of that shit. You're going on another tour. Starts when? Uh, September 26th, I think. For everyone out there that's going to go to this tour, stop and say what up to this dude. Oh, no, 24th. He's going to be the DJ. September 24th. He'll be the guy looking like Baby Sinclair from the Dinosaurs. Yeah. And he'll just be up there doing DJ So what shit. do you go up with when you're DJing? Huh? What do you go up with? You got, like, some turntables or some shit? Uh, I just use uh, Pioneers. Uh, They're, like, uh, those, like, CDJs. Okay. They're, not, a- they're not really CDJs. They're more like that controller, you know, the, like, that portable one and shit. It's a Pioneer SDDJ. Yeah. Like one of those. Oh, got you, got you, got you. Like, it's nice. really small. Instead of taking the whole big heavy unit, you take this little, like, not not folder size, but like, like let's say, uh, 
Well, I get it. Decent I ha- size, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, like the thing you got, Marty. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's better because when you're on tour, you don't want to pack all the shit, you know? You want to pack uh, light. Hey, that's it, the thing. Like, you want to have a backup for everything. You want to be prepared. But, hey. What? Did they? <laughs> remember what happened to you on tour last time? <laughs> Is that involved in any video? No. <coughs> you sure? That, it's. You're in the vlog where you had to go to the hospital. Uh, there's a vlog where I went to the hospital. Is that in there somewhere? No. Don't play dumb. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> For all the fans out there, you guys already saw it. You <laughs> you need to give me a million dollars for that. They didn't show it all? No, they didn't show nothing. <coughs> they, they showed you walking back, huh? Mm-hmm. This weed's getting in my throat. <clears throat> me too. <clears throat> Weird, but... Sorry for everyone in the car just listening to dudes. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... Sorry, 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 sorry. No, I, um... They didn't, they didn't put none of that, and then he knows not to put none of that. <laughs> I passed the fuck out at a. Uh, at so an got event. too fucked up at one of the shows, and in the vlog he's there, and the next cut is seven hours later. And he's supposed to walk with a hospital <laughs> band on, all fucked up. <laughs> fuck you guys, like, half naked. Yo, it's so fucking funny, uh, dude. Nah, dude, I thought I got roofied and shit. And you didn't. No, well, I don't know what the fuck happened, dude. I, I didn't, saw. I didn't get drunk. Nothing. I didn't get drunk. Nothing, bro. Really? I thought you were shit faced. No. Hell no. They never That's, mind. It's not as funny. That, no, 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 dude. I thought I got fucking roofied in uh, Orlando or some shit. Because look, trip out. We had performed at this fucking club in Orlando and whatever. We left and then the manager said, yo, you guys can come back and enjoy the fucking reggaeton party. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. You know, I was like, I'm going to go to that shit. I'm going to see what's up. I want to see the vibe in Orlando. Bro, I don't know, bro. They were giving free drinks and all oh. kind of shit. And I got one drink. And Probably that's all it feed, took. Bro. That's all it took. One drink. That sucks. Yeah. You didn't tell me that part. Yeah, yeah, That's no, yeah, not nearly yeah. as funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got drugged, probably. No, I mean, the other part was funny after. I know. But because was every, every, everybody was laughing because I said, I haven't ate meat in like two years. And it was lie because I, I I had stopped eating meat like a you year hadn't or at all shit. yet. Yeah, I know you yeah. personally. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that and I passed out. <laughs> Yo, yeah. so, so in, I, in short, that's how you met him doing the DJ. You start touring again in in uh, September, all the um, way across all across the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. So Danny Duncan sixty nine dot com. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, if you guys go to the show. Uh, do me a favor. Pull up. Say what up. Say what up. Say hi. Say I'll hello. Be, I'll be in a near city. I don't know. City near You're you. High. I'm high as shit. That's. What I could <laughs> see it on your face. And those joints aren't fully done, so I could tell you're high. Um, hella you high. Didn't even kill that him. last puff. Fucking me up. Right Look now. at my joint. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. On to the next one. Next question. Next question. Next question. So right, we done. This comes in full circle. All right. You're no you you're now becoming friends with all these people, all these rappers, all these entertainers, doing all this stuff. You're just the dude of diamond. You're just the guy doing this shit. Uh, and then one day, your jerk ass texts me, and goes, "Check out this little song I made." And you made it. This Marty, did I ever tell you this? He made a little song on his fucking phone on an app, and he goes, "It sounds pretty sick, right?" He sent it to me, and I go, "Yo, this." Is actually fucking awesome. <laughs> this is super fucking cool. Yeah, he sent me a little. It's like, dun, 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 dun. I'm like, it's, did you make this on your phone? He goes, I made it on my phone. It's an app where you just do, and you click all the beats and this, uh-huh. and like his voice on it. I'm like, this is actually very cool, bro. He goes, Yeah, I think I'm gonna try to do something. So he went to first, and then you take off, take over from there. Um, what happened <clears> after? <throat> after you sent me that, I go, this is tight. The next day you went to first. Yeah. And then take it from there. So I I made the song. I used to uh, garage band on my phone. And uh, I pretty much ended up learning it, how to do it. And it was kind of easy. It just, you can put even a, like a, make the sounds and switch them and different keys. Kind of like FL Studios and the regular beat making, you know, mm-hmm. 
program. And I made the song, and I was like, dude, I kept on listening to it, listening to it, listening to it. And I was like, all right, that's why I sent it to you. I was like, check this out. And then you said, dude, it's actually pretty good. I sent it first. And first, I was like, yo, bro, what, what are you going to do with this? You know? Like, and you're not a music and I was like, person. I, I, I mean, you, yes, but you're not a musician in that term. You just know these guys as friends. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, wait, what? This, you made this? Yeah, yeah. You piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> but like, music has always been like in my life. I've been doing music since a kid. Like, in other words, I've been playing in bands since like middle school. Yeah, the, and that's and, rock uh, bands and like rock all and that metal shit, shit. Metal yeah. shit, you know, like I learned how to play guitar by myself, but keyboard, bro. Pro, everything. Metal shit versus the stuff we all know oh, you yeah, sound yeah, like yeah, 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 is yeah. not in the same realm. Of course, but I, I was always like music in tune with everything. 100%. I get that. I get yeah. that. But I'm talking about from their perspective. Yeah. Like, oh, Omar's coming over. Wait. Why? Wait, you made this shit? Yeah. Come oh, over yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, Come yeah, over yeah. right now. Yeah. Because you have Definitely. a producer making fucking Grammy nominated hits. Yeah, yeah. And he's just your friend. Yeah. And now you're making shit, shit that he can go. Oh, we, I could work. We with this. we uh, almost got nominated for one. Uh, for your, for I, the yeah, one you, I, one I you did. Wrote, I wrote it. Yeah, right? help uh, help write, and he produced it and all that. He gave me. He's like, yo, this uh, got nominated for African uh, girl. She's like, she's really fucking dope. You should help her with some words if you can. And we were, she was doing some song, and then I, I did, and that shit was dope ass fucking track and. Look, look at the shit that can happen by just helping, you know, or whatever. You know, I didn't see nothing of it. I never see nothing of it. Like, I don't think, like, oh, I'm going to do this in, in hopes of, nah, fuck that. I just do it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care. Like, well, see what happens after? Fuck it, you I know? I got you. Yeah, so, and that's how I, no, so I go, did the music. So go back. You went to first with that little thing on your phone. Yeah, so I went to him with that on my phone, and he was like, all right. I got it. And then he like made another beat or whatever. And then he's like, now rap to this or whatever. Had like, you go over it. Yeah. So like, so then he, uh, one day I shot him a song, which was like, que lo que was the first song that I did. Right. I sent it to him. He's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, what, you, what the fuck have you been doing? You know? And I was doing this in my fucking, I was doing this in my living room at that time. And at that time, I'm going to keep it a buck, I was also pissed off, you know? Like, not pissed, but, like, also mad because, like, I'm mad. I mean, like, sad and mad because, like, at that time, like, I had separated from Diamond, you know? So it felt like a relationship almost, like, that I broke up, you know? Like, damn. I mean, they're my boys still, you know? Everybody, we're all cool and shit. But I felt like, damn, I broke up with a girl, you know? Like, type shit, you know? But because I, I, I was in there for like six years, you know, like doing all this shit, you know, like. <clears throat> so then I was like, fuck it, I'm going to make I'm going to go make music now, you know. So then I started making music and that's when I made Ratchetón. I was like, I'm going to make ratchet reggaeton music, put it trap and reggaeton music, put it together and create the sound with a Spanish and Atlanta producer, which is FKI first. So he's like, dude, what? Let's it was the first time I heard that style of music. And now yeah, I hear it yeah. a fuck. I hear it a lot now. Yeah, exactly. To be honest. I, yeah, yeah. I had never heard it before you sent me that yeah, shit. Yeah, so I knew reggaeton was coming on its way back. You know, I knew it was, because I, I like to stay, like I said, in tune to what the streets is listening to in Puerto Rico or whatever. Like, and I fucking knew reggaeton was going to come back. Cause everybody was starting to like to play the old stuff in the radio, and uh, and like there was this new artist coming up at the time, like Osuna, J Balvin. J Balvin wasn't that big yet, you know what I'm saying? It was just like his first music videos. Uh, when he started, I was like, "Oh shit, it's coming back!" So I was like, "All right, Ratchet Man is gonna t transform into Ratcheton now." You know, like, uh, I don't want to be uh, a fucking, uh, the, the plug linking fools no more. And I want to do something for myself now and let's see what I can do, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I went to first and we did that. And, you know, how destiny works, man. If you just, he told me, like, if you just do what you have to do, everything will work out eventually, you know, just be patient. And so I kept on making a lot music more music like 
to the well, point after where, you after he redid your first song, yeah, you sent it to me. It sounded like a whole different song. Yeah, yeah. But like, like your shit was tight, and then he just elevated the fuck out of it. Yeah. And what did I say? It's a radio song. Yeah, that's a fucking ra- that's that's shit you hear on the radio or during a commercial. Yeah, like it sounded re- legit, like like crazy. a radio yeah, fucking yeah. song, bro. So then, to the point where like he obviously made it better. You know, he's a fucking he's the best. The producer, you know? yeah. Like, um, one day he he like, bro, don't trip. Something's happening. You know, like just don't trip. He didn't really want to tell me or like jinx anything. And somehow, fuck, dude, I got a record deal. Fucking, I got signed to Republic because of that, you know? For like one fucking song. Well, the the song wasn't even fucking out, It dude. wasn't even out, Marty. And they gave him a deal. Republic gave him a fucking record. Not even a small one. Republic gave him a record deal. Yeah. Off one song. I was standing outside yeah. on like 8th Street across the street from it the fucking laser tag place when you called me. And I remember exactly where I was like, wait, yeah. what would you say? You got a what? I remember where I was at when you uh, called me. Uh, like, yeah. No fucking. Way. Yeah, yeah, dude. I was like, "What the fuck? No fucking way!" Like, so tired, dude. And and I, I at that time I was like, "Oh hell no!" Like I, I I gotta go hard now, you know? Like, holy shit, you know? Like, I didn't even know. Like, damn, what the fuck? We were just smoking weed, and you made some shit on your phone. And then I went to the studio and, and he's like, Fuck. by the way, guys, I have this guy. He's my friend. He's making music. You should get the Spanish artist signed. Yeah. And then they got you a deal. Yeah. It's well, it wasn't you know. even. No, it wasn't even like I, it's a, how fast I, I don't I don't think it, it happened like that. I think they were like, uh, he just the, pl- I think he just played. It he for was him. just playing like uh, I think the vice president at the time. Uh, he uh, went to the studio and he was hearing like, oh, what you been working on type shit, you know? And then my song stumbled upon. And they're like, what is that, you know? Mm-hmm. And then at that time, I also had like a little other sample. Yeah, and you could hear it I only it, had though. two. I only had two. I remember your second one. Your second one's that yeah, hard trap yeah, one. Yeah, the, that, the knock yeah, ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then yeah. they were like, what the fuck is this? That shit sounds ridiculous, you know? bro. And then at the time, also, I had... Uh, Hit up my homies, uh, Shoreline and shit, Phoenix. And I was like, yo, bro, we should get on the song. And he's like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. So you're the and guy then, linking all these guys. They're your friends. And then they're like, wait, you're making good music now? Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's work. Well, because Shoreline how, is fucking huge. It now, links, you know? like, and, but it's so, it work, it's like me going, yeah. you're going to grow weed? Oh, yeah, I know a lot of growers. <laughs> like, bro, 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 I have trip the, out. I have the plug. So before, too, like... Before I really got into the music, I recorded a fucking Playboy Cardi music video. Oh, you did? Yeah, with Fat, Fat Man Key. It's called Ghost. Fat Man Key, Playboy Cardi. And at the end of the video, you see the Ratchet Man logo. Directed by a Ratchet no Man. No way. I swear. You can check on YouTube if you want. That's to. awesome. Playboy Cardi. I didn't yeah. know who he was, and you were like, yo, yeah. this one needs weed. I go, all right, I know who to call. Don't you? Yeah, so. <laughs> That's the only so, time I knew he was. So, yeah, it's crazy. Like, you know, so from doing that, I was like, fuck, I, I know all these people. You know, like, what the fuck? Like, I know the Sunny. Like, I could try to ask Sunny for a beat or something now. The you tallest, know, like. Longest person and then I've ever to the met point where I, yeah, to so the, the point where. <laughs> to the point where I fucking. <laughs> I uh I have a song where like first and McConan produced too that you know like mm-hmm. oh, pff, you know like it's crazy it was crazy and I was like damn I'm really fucking in this shit now yeah, you know it's now really it's working. my turn yeah yeah you know I was fucking tripping bro like there was a time where they. the label sent me to the Lion Grammys it was my first Lion I Grammys remember. well I yeah I remember. When you things happen, you, you let me know. Yeah. And I'm at home going, and I have a great memory. Yeah, I remember yeah. where I was when you told me Latin Grammys. Yeah, yeah. yeah I so, remember everything. So that when they sent me the Latin Grammys, bro, I started tripping out because I'm like looking around. I'm like, holy shit, Pat Bunny's right there. Jay Balvin's right there. Rosalia's right there. Like everyone was just around me, and I'm just like. And you got the sound that they want. Honestly, bro, I'm going to be honest. Well, That's what I hear now. They, Anytime I hear Spanish music, it's, it sounds like your shit. They they have a commercial sound. They have the hits that that oh yeah, but worldwide I'm, I'm saying commercial for artist sound. wise. But yo, but what'd you just mix? Trap, trap. You just mix yeah, that with together. Trap and yeah. reggaeton, and and I add a little bit of cumbia on mine, like that. So it's like a little different, you know. But 
those dudes uh i was around those dudes in my head i was like holy shit dude like this is fucking insane you like, know fucking like, three months ago i was not yeah. doing this yeah. i remember i even bumped into like Le- dj lechero he's all over the radio i bumped into him the first time when i met him like it was like somewhere in the land grammys while we were all doing interviews he was going to a different room i was going to a different room I had my Salvi flag. He had a Mexican flag. We're like, what up, primo? And I like, said, what up? And yeah, that's the first time I met DJ Lachetto too. Like, it was it, it was a crazy experience, like, to be around, like, a bunch of people I like that. I first started, yeah. yeah. And then I was, like, brand new. They didn't know me type shit. I was just this chubby guy, like, long hair, fucking wearing... Uh, all of a sudden, I'm wearing expensive shit without even <laughs> wanting to buy this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, fuck, dude. You know, like, I'm not you that just wore flashy. a fucking metal shirt and everything else flashy. Well, now everybody's fucking wearing yeah, metal Yeah, but your real metal shirt. shirt, the one that you wore eight years ago. <laughs> no, I know, but they're calling it vintage. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, you would look like you paid 400 bucks for it, Yeah, too. on mine. Yeah, that's so, crazy, uh, that's dude. Everybody crazy. is wearing metal shirts yeah, now. now, but yeah. now's, the, now's the trend, you know? Mm-hmm. I remember, bro, back in the day when we went to, a, a, like, a like a, I think we were going to, like, a club in Hollywood, right? They didn't fucking let me in because I was wearing a metal shirt, right? But shout out to Jerry Lorenzo, but Jerry Lorenzo comes, fucking Nike designer, Jerry Lorenzo, Fear of God, with a Metallica fucking Fear of God shirt ripped up, more ripped than mine, and he walks right in. And we're like, huh? Huh? Uh, Racist! <laughs> no, 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 I was like, I know, but I'm kidding. What? Oh hell no! And I was like, man, whatever. I I was like, fuck this shit. Yeah. I left. I was like, I'm not even going. F- I maybe my shit was Cannibal Corpse, fucking bloody shit. You know, I was like, ah, oh, okay, I get it. You know, they don't want it. <laughs> Cannibal Corpse. No, I get, it, I get it. But yeah, but yeah. So it's fucking insane, man. I fucking been around the room with a bunch of fucking people because of this shit, because of music and. For, for everyone at home, I know that a lot of them that are super fans are like, so wait, he's making Spanish music and you liked it, Tom. The best thing ever. Marty, you ready? The best thing ever was when I finally saw this fool in person. We're chilling every other day anyway, but when I finally saw him in person after he showed me the song, I had this fool play it and he's doing this every line. Blah, 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 blah. His song's playing he goes... And he's reciting it in English to me, so I know what he's saying. <laughs> I go, hey, what are you saying? And he pressed pause. So something, 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 something. And then he played again, and his Spanish music's playing again, and he pressed pause. And yeah. then I, then I, then I, then I, this, then I, this. And I go, oh, so you're like, you're talking about some chick that she's like a gold digger. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, yeah, I get it now. Yeah. He's line for line telling me in yeah. English because I didn't know what the fuck he's saying. I just know the sound was like, oh, fuck, this is great. Yeah. I just didn't know the words. And then that's when I met my second Spanish lesson. Yeah, that was when this fool started doing music. That that was fucking crazy, man. One fucking song, man. It literally takes to anyone making music, producer, which a lot anything, of people do that follow us. I've seen it. All really, lot. check it out. It really only takes one fucking song or something really catchy, like to the point where people are becoming famous off TikTok. They make a catchy little song. Yeah, people are like, "Where is this song? Make it or finish it." Next thing you know, it has fucking half a million views because TikTok on their Spotify, you know what I'm saying? doesn't matter. Like, from there, you have to go with the current, not against the current. You just got to make another song, you know? Keep doing another song, you know? Like, I get it. That's pretty much, I feel like it only takes one, you know? Where can people find your music? My music, you can get it on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon. And how do you spell it for everyone out there? It's Ratchetone. But it's Ratchetone. It's the word Ratchet. Uh, ratchet and O N. O N. But it's got that little, you know, that no. Latin squiggle line. No. <laughs> That's just on the logo. That's I just know. on the logo. I, know. You t- I don't even it, know what it's, it's just, called. Accent line? Yeah, just Ratchet. I need to go back to school. Did you say N-Y? Not N-Y? Not N-Y. N-Y. I don't know. No. Is that it? That's no, from Ryan Sickler. That's, that's the end with a little squiggle. All right. I yeah. don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> that's Ryan Sickler. 
He said that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah you can right. you can get it all platforms, YouTube, all that. You uh, so your YouTube and it's not we related. We can actually link it. It'll be in the description, guys. We'll leave your description, uh, your link, and everything in the description. Marty, I have to guess how long we've been talking. One forty two. Ooh, 146. Ooh, I nice. felt the one four something. Damn. I don't know why. Just inside. Nice. I can't see the. Yeah, no, you yeah. listen, you've hit it spot yeah. on before. Like uh. 152, it feels like. <laughs> yeah, 152. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just can't see the, the time because the, the, the notes. time's blocked. I know. It's like, oh, shit, how long have we been oh, here? Oh, hell no. Get the. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> um, so, damn, uh, I will be going to the first, the Dan Duncan show in, in LA, wherever you do. Yeah, yeah. Dude, when I went to the last Danny Duncan show, there were so many fans of ours there. Yeah. It was awesome. That's there were was so many of our fans were like, yo, what the fuck are you here? I'm like, I'm in the 21 and up section with the parents. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm over here with all the dads. With all the dads. With my little brother and his, yeah, and, his, and his homie. So he got us, like, we went backstage and, like, yeah. my brother got to meet everybody. It's just a good experience. For, you know, as a kid, it's my anti Brett Favre experience. All right, yeah, that's yeah. what I want to give to everyone. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. want you to be disappointed like yeah. Brett Favre. <laughs> so, he did you the greatest gift, though. Yep. Yeah. Everything I could do for my brother, and my homies, I'm like yo, like the first time I met Shavo, I didn't tell this fool because he's a system of a down fanatic too. Yeah. And he just went and saw him in Vegas, and my friends like, you want to interview Shavo? It's like three years ago before I ever he was ever my friend. Yeah. And I Facetimed him I'm like yo. Uh, before I'm like, yo, my friend's a fan. Can you just say hi on FaceTime? I was pushing it. Don't ask people for that the first yeah, time. Yeah, I was yeah, pushing yeah. it because yeah. he was my friend. So I'm like, nah, I got, it's got to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's got to happen. And I FaceTimed him with this one. He was not prepared in yeah. any way, shape, or form. Bro, I was in my bed, no shirt type shit. My hair all fucked up. I don't care. It has to be done. I was like, oh, hell no. Man, it's not as bad as <laughs> we, we met Warren G one night while we were out. And April walked up to him. Warren fucking G. April walks up to him and goes, my mom loves you. <laughs> Her mom this is to warn G. No. I don't know. Maybe she fucking had regulators on at one point. But that shit is random. Mom is Regulator. Like, Yo, my mom's like, if you ever have Mike Tyson on, you better fucking let me be in the room. She oh, will not God. stop. Right now, next week when this comes out, in the chat, live chat, my mom's watching. Obviously, mom, I know you're watching right now. She's in every chat. <laughs> You can't be here. Mike Tyson's here. She's yeah, forward to her and Tyson fist fighting. Oh, All fuck no, bro. Uh, no. I can't. I broke my back. She wins. Spinal. She wins. Uh, <laughs> Mike Tyson's too cool, bro. No, it's, my mom's a fanatic. She's uh, an actual boxing fan. So it's like, I can't have you around. You're super fan. You're a super fan. I don't want you to, every time he lashes, yeah. ha, 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 over there. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> can't have that mom uh sorry we're on a way different topic my bad uh, so uh all right cool close to two so hours. what's up what's up with these impromptu sports events you do soccer uh, oh, oh it comes from our skating day w what soccer he said i gotta get out and start doing stuff well yeah 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 well i actually uh started playing a lot of soccer recently and started going to a lot of soccer games uh we got, um, oh, we'll vlog it. We'll vlog it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're gonna we're, we're gonna, gonna go to the soccer a, game. Yeah, we're gonna do a blog, proper blog, and we're gonna go to the soccer field and see Thomas try to play. I'm really good at soccer. Fuck you. Uh, what me? These guys are pretty <laughs> I, good. I used to play soccer, <laughs> asshole. All right, we'll see. Man, everybody thinks they're good. We saw some dudes. We got like four hey, people by I, our apartment. I oh no, no, I'm trash. I'm trash yeah, compared no, I'm to I good thought, guys. I, I'm like, but I'm man, pretty I'm good. Sure yeah, yeah. I, I I'm ready. Yeah, I've been uh, going crazy. Fun, bro. Yeah, I oh, yeah. also play basketball too. So. Yeah, Anybody I know we all know that from the skate vlog. You made a bunch of them in a row. Yeah, I was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but, uh, you know, just trying to be more active, but yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, this was just like throwing soccer game meets, like yeah. pickup games, but just soccer pickup games. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty, it's I pretty, love pretty that. sick. Man, it's pretty cool. I'm shit like that. Yeah. Yo, yeah. why do you yeah. play college basketball? We still haven't played basketball yet, man. Yeah. It needs to happen. And it's sick because you can see LA, like, all like downtown like sick when it's like the sun's going down it's not it's so just hot. fun bro to get active and do yeah. cool it's just fun it's soccer's dope. fucking fun hell yeah you don't even feel like you're running until uh, you're done every you thursday every thursday really every thursday i oh, play shit. 6 p.m every thursday <laughs> yeah. when, you, when you said it like that i just imagine you're like i'm just thinking drone shots yeah, the yeah. gimbal out there that should be sick be no, cool. it's fucking no bro it's beautiful and it's like under the like a big old bridge you know where born and raised it that 
big old fucking punk party in LA. Oh, it's right it's there. It's like literally close to it, bro. It's like it's uh, beautiful, bro. I was it's, just talking about that party to my sister actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just a, telling her about that it. shit fucking it's a sick ass spot, bro. It's, it's too there's too much sickness out there for me to be going to those crowds where everybody's touching and mosh pitting, but no but no, but the <laughs> soccer a fun field. scene. Yeah, no, bro. Soccer episode for sure, it's gonna be amazing. Pull up. <laughs> All right. Well, after we saw McGregor break his leg, I decided not to do the skate vlog, but we were supposed to go skate with Jerron and who yeah, else? Jerron, uh, Jerron, Fabian, Fabian, and I think Guy was gonna Guy come. Marciano, yeah, Mariano, Mariano, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, God damn it, McGregor! Dude, remember he broke his leg, and I went, "I'm not fucking doing the skate vlog. I'm oh, done." Man, that scared me to death. I can't do it. I know I'll do it, but I don't want to be hitting no ramps. We're no, supposed to do a fucking just skating fucking with pros. Play soccer. I'll go play soccer. Yeah, go play soccer. Go play soccer. Yeah, uh, I've been playing soccer and going to these soccer games like LAFC and like I went into the Little Salvador game because of my friend FIFA. Like he's been like he plays soccer. Like him and his brother. His brother's like a coach for kids. His name is FIFA. Yeah, literally oh. FIFA. He. That's his rapper name, FIFA. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. What the was born fuck? To play. He's born yeah, to yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my son, he's over here called National Basketball <laughs> Association. Uh, his name is NBA, young boy. <laughs> That's different, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, um, yeah, so I've just been, you know, trying to stay active and play play more. So. How the fuck do we get it? Oh, you asked, what's up with these soccer yeah, excursions? Yeah, okay, yeah. never mind. But yeah, enough of like, this why soccer. Are we talking about soccer. We'll do this blog later. <laughs> um, so we can find you on Spotify, iTunes, everything. YouTube is Ratchetone. Yeah. All one word, same yeah. thing. Same thing. Okay. So um, Twitch. Oh, yeah, Twitch. So real quick, you guys have been seeing, I know you guys have been seeing on the news, fucking, they're like, why is Post Malone playing Magic? It's because of this fucking jerk. I call this fool. Hey. I, I'm not really mean. I don't mean you're a nerd, but I have to say, every time you bring up Magical, you fucking nerd. Hey. Because it's funny to me to call you a nerd. <laughs> like, dude, there's a nerdy thing you got, motherfucker. Yeah. And it's Magic. I love Magic together, I know you man. do. Dude. Every time he goes to my house, he goes to fucking... Uh, he goes to a store to buy magic cards every fucking time. We're yeah. talking about like magic a video the game card type game, thing. magic the gathering. So Mo Post Malone's hella into that because of this fucking dude. He dude, got him into this shit. He fucking like Facetime me and he's like, "Dude, what's up? I'm gonna beat you up when I see you." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" He's like, "So I heard you uh, play magic," and I was like, "Fuck yeah, I play magic. What's up?" <clears throat> and he's like, "Come over to my uh, come over to my hotel. Let's play." I was like, are you sure? Like, sure you want to get really? destroyed I magic. was like, are you sure? I was like, I'm going to play really dirty. He's like, all right, what do you have? And He's I was asking like, you for the card. I was like, I play with this type of style. In fact, and I hit you 10 times, you're dead. Like, literally. Fucking no. And he was like, he was just like, oh, you bastard. And then people showed up to the hotel to the point where he's like, he called me back. He was like, hey, uh, let's just play tomorrow. Cause or he's like, oh, I don't got those cards yet. Maybe I should no. just play tomorrow. Well, <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe. But he told me like, hey, there's people coming. And yeah, then Smitty, back to Smitty, he FaceTimed me like, where you at? What the fuck? And then everybody started pulling up. So it, it was in the time to play Magic. Magic the Gathering in the middle of the rapper party? <laughs> yeah. I don't think you probably should Yeah, so he magic was like, nah, hit me. It's funny as fuck. Yeah, though. yeah. So he was like, hit me tomorrow and let's get this game in. Boom. Tomorrow comes. Motherfucker goes to fucking uh, what's that shit called? Um, You're gonna say Fra continent? Frankincense or something like that. yeah. Frankincense is like a place where they sell like all types. Oh, of Frank like, and Sons. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought you were trying to say the word frankincense. No, no, no. I was so confused. Right no, 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 no. Frankincense, and um, they sell all these like retro stuff, fucking cards and all that shit. Magic, Pokemon. Oh, so like I said, he needed to go re up on cards to beat your ass. <laughs> yeah, so he went, bought some fucking cards. Next thing you know, he's all over TMZ because he's buying magic cards and all kinds of shit. And I was like, holy shit, I opened up the wormhole on oh, something no. different, you know, like yeah. nerdy. All the nerds felt like they won, like, oh my God. Nerd shit's shit. fucking great. And then the, I was like, fuck yeah, like, that's just magic that's all about just have fun and i don't care man i'm just there to play and have fun like yeah so on and, twitch 
Yeah, you play I'll magic be, yeah, games. I'll, I'll be playing magic games with people from like New York. Fucking it's just I love the fact Canada. that you love magic so fucking much. Yeah, because it's I'm like addicted. the nerdy thing of every. Somebody's always got one little thing. You know what I mean? Like, bro, someone's always got something. It's like, as weird as this like, sounds. They just magic. did this fucking Dungeon Dragons collab. Like literally, now. I never played that either. Yeah, I mean, I never played that. I've never tried I, it. I never played it too, but. They just did magic collab, and it's pretty cool. I tried cool. Pokemon, but as a kid. I haven't bought into it yet. So you play Pokemon shit when you're a kid too. I right? used to play Pokemon. But I tried. Eh. It was just too hard to get into. Like to me, it was. Drop oh, imagine the action! Yeah. Like, fuck you, bro. Let's play yeah. video game. I'm playing hard game. like Yu Gi Oh shit. You know? Yeah, like, when Yu Gi Oh came out, I was well past it. Yeah, I was I was yeah, already watching yeah. too much WWF at that point. Yeah, moment. yeah. Playing with wrestlers, physical, tangible yeah. slams. Like, so you that's were what like fucking do. breaking. Toys apart, like Sid. Never. No? I took care of mine, but I did full-on wrestling matches. Uh, oh, yeah. You still have your little case. Yeah, you're right. He was archiving his yeah, toys. Yeah, yeah, he was. He still has Warehousing his case. them. They're still on Yeah, they're still in. <laughs> <laughs> I was that kid, bro. He still has them. Shits are clean, too. Was, yeah. Still, still got, odd touch. Wait. Oh, oh. oh. What? I what gave happened? Rosie's nephew two of my toys out of the chest when oh, he was here, no. and I did not get Laura Croft and Spider-Man back. <sighs> Oh my god! I need my toys back. Sorry, oh. this is not podcast relevant at all. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> all <yeah>. right, man. <laughs> so that's what happened with Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Magic the Gathering. You know, just turned into a conversation. If you we guys want to oh, fucking geez. play, let's fucking do it. <laughs> Every time we have one of my actual friends come on here, we're just going to put a fake phone thing. It looks like we're FaceTiming. Yeah. <laughs> Every time me and you do a solo, we should just yeah. crop in a phone. Yeah. <laughs> How cool of an edit would that be? Uh huh. That'd be pretty simple. Every time you go back to you, it's just me in the corner up top. <laughs> I've actually so, been thinking like about that. It? Yeah, yeah. It's a picture in picture style. That's kind of tight. Yeah. I don't know. We we'll said that. Um, damn, dude. We we just talked for two hours. Right yeah. Now about nothing. Which about is great. just. <laughs> I love no. I love your story because it's like. You're, you're somebody that's like, I'm not any one thing. I dabble in a bunch of different things because my muscle kind of extends across. Yeah, yeah. And I tell people all the time, when you can add value to other people, yeah, that's how you stay around for a long yeah, time. Yeah, bro. When There's you're not worried about only being the star of the show, but yeah. it's about, you yeah. know, you got to have skills. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I like the community, bro. They accepted me for who I am. They're like, they, they, they throw some jabs in there. They're like, hey, man, you have some free time from your rapper stuff? You know, like, it's just funny, bro. Like, it's just like a little community and they're cool, bro. Like, for example, I posted this thing. Oh, I need these little few cards. Everyone DM me like, I got them for you. Just send me your address. Sure. Here. You're talking about the magic, like the the community. Yeah, the community. Yeah. And by the way, before we keep going, I don't mean nerds in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just talking shit to to, to Omar. (laughs) By the way, these are not prescriptive. These are $5. Oh, by the way, uh, Omar put these glasses on and became a reggaeton artist. (laughs) (laughs) Because five minutes before it. (laughs) Nah, nah, nah. (laughs) See what $5 can make a difference, you know? Because $5 really changes your whole game. Yeah, it's about the confidence. <laughs> they, they might be bootleg, but you know. You look like you're trying to trying to sell me dep outdoor packs at 22. Those uh, glasses tell me you tax people with weed, especially with this SF hat, huh? With that SF hat and those tells me you're gonna do this a lot I while should, you talk. Actually, I should you're gonna rub just, your hands like I that. I should have put a big ponytail too. If you had a ponytail, you might have a, a Uzi in your car, or a <laughs> or a pistol with a really long extended clip. That's the a Bay banana, Area fools banana, with just the chain. Yeah, they have the plain shirt, the hat, and the hair with the braids. Mm-hmm. Those are the fools that have the automatic guns. <laughs> and everybody at home that I just described from the Bay is going, yep, yep, that's yep. exactly right. My hair. Well, you forgot the grill, too. Yeah, but that's mainly like the Asian Oakland. dudes at the grill, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Oakland yeah. fools. Whatever happened? Ah, oh, I miss. Never. What is running for you? Yeah. Oh, let's leave it at that. Yeah, oh, what happened to Ezel? Where's Ezel at? I, I haven't know. seen that fool in two years, man. <laughs> Fuck. Um, so everybody, you can find all your stuff. It's linked in the description. Yes, sir. All right, all right. That was good. That was and good. Yeah, that was man. a good episode. Uh, Thank yeah. you, man. Thank, Thank you. you. So uh, we're gonna Thank need somebody guys. to open up for us at our first live show. For is, sure. Yeah, he's gonna open up. He's just gonna do bo- gonna... Uh, magic unboxing. <laughs> uh, uh, no. That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> No, well, I would press play and then perform and then run back to the DJ and then press play. You know what I'm <laughs> oh, that'd be sick. That'd be sick. You know, one man. And you oh, like do Lil unboxings. B. Like Lil B, he does that. He presses play, goes in front, raps, and then goes back and DJs. Lil B. What happened to Lil yeah. B? Where's he at? Bass God. I haven't seen him in so long. I don't know. 
getting pictures of feet sent to him. I know. What a wild Twitter to have. That's all he just posts. Yeah, it's all he posts. <laughs> it's all he posts. It's crazy. Loki's he's a wild ass dude. <laughs> uh, the last time I think it was on the Mac Miller album. Last thing I heard from him. Dude, I was uh, out of subject, but I was there when he got jumped in the bay, bro. Oh, when they beat, when they punched yeah. him, who punches Lil B? I have no uh, idea. Uh, I don't That's know. crazy, I, you, bro. You could do your research. I'm not gonna say go to. No, I, I remember when it happened. They jumped him and shit, and I seen him, and he came out on stage. He was like, "Man, I love y'all, man. I just want to give you a hug. Come on stage, bro. Like, give me my backpack so I can perform for the people." They took his backpack and shit, so he couldn't perform. But yeah, he was like, "I love y'all, man." He said, like, "I love you." He's the most positive person. And he's on the planet, like, bro. and then the the thing that I loved about what he said, he's like, "Come on, man! They just jumped me. I was here one deep, one deep." I remember that. I remember what happened. I was like, oh my yeah. god! Damn, the internet makes your life go by so fast. That was years ago. Yeah. Like, oh damn. Oh damn. Yeah. Oh damn. And then you remember by video. Yeah, I was there at the Rolling Louds and all that shit. And I seen that shit. Uh. Because you took me to the Smokers Club, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Smokers Club. That shit was tight. Yeah, yeah. But that's another story. Whole that's another it. story. Whole another day. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. This has been right. just one long just smoking weed and talking video, <laughs> which is fine. But like, <laughs> Which is called our podcast. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. you could say that. Uh, Ratchet Man, Omar, Ratchet Tone, thank you, man. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for uh bringing the weed i needed oh, <laughs> because yeah, i had yeah. no weed and i had no time before the show I'll go can you pick this weed up on the way yeah. i was like yeah yeah i got you <laughs> um yeah links in the description guys appreciate you dude yeah thank man. you appreciate you thank you thank you guys uh for everyone out there if you're driving please be safe thank you so much baby sinclair steven seagal <laughs> <Omar Regent>. <laughs> <laughs> Baby oh, we're just gonna do we're talk shit. That's we gotta have OG son. here yeah. to talk every eight minutes. Go, yeah, Brody, that's right. Uh, uh, weasel tits. <laughs> and that's it. That's all he'll say. And I'm like, have you rolled joints? Oh, God, be like, eh, yeah, hey, right, fool. Okay. Like, you know, like. <laughs> like guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like, what to do, Brody? Exact. That's exactly what he called me yeah. after I called you. Yeah. But you already picked it, uh, weed up at the shop. Mm -hmm. Brody, what do you need? Like, oh, shit. Uh, what to do, Brody? I can literally. Bet myself money on what he's gonna say. Opening the fucking, I mean, answering the phone. Mm -hmm. There's three things he's gonna say. Yeah. It's fucking. Hilarious. Oh, what's up, Mijo? What's up, Mijo? Oh, my little Mijo. <laughs> oh, you're getting big. Like, shut the fuck up, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I hate. Fuck um, it, before we keep going and stuff, all right, let's just end it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're in the car, please be careful. If you're at home, chill with your friends. Thank you for making this part of your day. This has been the Dope as Usual podcast. We talk about life, drugs, accomplishments, and everything in between. Oh, and problems. But today was a lot of a. Uh, just fun. I, I didn't think of any of that was bad. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a good episode. So, I don't do drugs. <laughs> fuck you. Thank you guys so much for watching. What I, is drugs? I appreciate it. For Marty, Ratchet Man, and I, have a dope ass day. Yo, do you remember that video of that guy getting arrested? Like, are you on any drugs? He yeah. Goes, what, is what are drugs? drugs? Yeah. Or what is drugs? That's what, what he is says. Drugs? All twacked yeah. up. What is drugs? Oh, well, trip out. That fucking guy. I know this Armenian guy. On Normandy, where I lived with my mom, he is, uh, that was one of his uncle's homies. They know that man. You should see this video. This guy's like this, basically biting his jaw. That happened was it's amazing. because all twacked. he had a bunch of pills and he had took all of them. That's why? Yo, the cops are like, you have any drugs on? He goes, no. Uh, what is drugs? Yeah. <laughs> the way he says it's so fucking <laughs> funny, bro. I mean, it hits hysterical. Mm -hmm. What is drugs? What is drugs?